Yeah, let's uh, continue Twilight Princess. We're up to <laughs> the, the water dungeon, water temple. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if this one was tedious, but you know, the reputation precedes uh, water dungeons. Anyway, if you're watching us later, as always, thanks for clicking. Hope you are enjoying the playthrough so far. For me, yeah, this is great, going back to this. After all these years. Okay, we're here. It did put me back one room, but I guess that makes sense. Okay. I forgot what this... What red goop does, anyway. Suddenly this starts becoming clear. I remember there's a lot of this. And multiple floors, yeah. I mean last time I played I was like, I'm not I'm not doing this late at night. I think I, I had the right call. Whoa, that's treacherous. Oh, don't think you ought to knock down those stalactites hanging off the ceiling first? They don't look very stable. I bet they'd break pretty easily if you hit them with enough force, don't you think? Nah. Yeah, I know. I know what it meant. I just was hopeful that... a waste. Okay, well, let's set up now. Once we get the hook shot, it'll be fine. Just right now, it's a little tedious. Stop. 
The music in this area is a little eerie. I guess I got a refund on the bombs. central room. Ah, oh, this brings back memories. I mean, maybe it's not as frustrating as I think it is, but if I remember correctly, there is a lot of, like, up and down. Okay. Well... I don't think I can start adjusting it yet, either. Definitely needed more of those. Okay, not gonna move anything just yet. Okay, I can't do anything else. I do have to drop it. Wait, did I come back to the same area? Hang on. Okay, so that has the key. Wait, let me just make sure there's nothing on the other side of that. Yeah, there is. I just want to say there's nothing in the middle here. Hmm. 
Why did it just invert? <laughs> I was pressing up. Wait, there's no map. Oh no, wait, it's this button. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna have a headache by the end of this. <laughs> hey, Liquison, hello. How are you? And you redeem the oh yes. Oh yes! Time for water temple. Get lost. Yes. I do remember this was tedious. Does the person have a sound? No, it's just I do my crappy Wario impersonation. I don't do soundboard stuff here. Find it distracting. <laughs> oh, the heck? Am I just going around in a circle? Okay, I have a reference point for where I was. That door requires a key. Hmm. How do I like this one? This one's one of my favorites because I have nostalgia for it. It was the first 3D one I played because I never had a Nintendo 64 growing up. And it was also the first console that I purchased on launch day. Because growing up had hand-me-down consoles. This was a big deal for me. Um, I am wearing flippers. I'm wearing the Zora outfit, so it lets me have properties like the Zora. So I can swim and I can, I guess, breathe underwater. And the Tektite, that's what those things were. They're like spider, spider crabs. I guess is the best description. I also like this one because it just had a pretty dark art style and story, I guess. At least for the time. I know there's darker stuff there now, but... Like, the Zora Queen gets executed in, in this one. And then there's the shadow creatures that are just, like, very nightmarish, like... Kind of a bit like War of the Worlds, if you've ever seen that. Like classic horror. came in from. 
This dungeon's gonna take me an hour at least. Ah, can't go across that yet. Wait a minute. Look up. Yep. There we go. Yeah, I played this when it first came out in 2006, so... Memories of it are not... Not there. I have vague memories. Like, I remember this dungeon being a pain. I remember loving the dungeon before this one, which, yep, I did. And I think later, like, some of the boss fights get pretty cool. Just the size of the room is massive and you're tiny and you have to fight this gigantic thing. Okay, well, I have a key. I guess that's it. Can't really do much else in here. But yeah, I'm putting extra effort into this one because it is one of the longer ones, so I have to make sure. I spend a decent amount of time playing it, otherwise I'm going to fall behind schedule. Okay. All you know of this game is like Nightmare Moon and Me Meedna. Meedna's cool. The first assistant in a Zelda game that wasn't annoying. <laughs> it also has probably some of the best storytelling. This game's kind of the reason some people don't like Breath of the Wild, because compared to this, Breath of the Wild has no story. And some people wanted something more like this. That's gonna mean anything. Oh, this one does. been annoying enemies. I remember in Zelda 1 just how much I hated them. Oh, 
Uh oh. I'm not sure I can do this yet. <laughs> Is there anything else in here? No. Leave. I can't do this yet. At least I don't think I can. sounds like a panther. That is not the sound that a lizard makes. I guess this is just... Let me go the other way. Let's just connect the room. We'll probably have more significance later. Wait, I can't go back up this way. Okay, hold on. The only thing I'm gonna try is this, but I doubt it works. Oh, it worked. Come here, come here! Oh. I didn't give anything. I thought I couldn't beat that thing because I distinctly remember the way you kill them was with the hookshot. You pull them out of their bubble. But I guess that works too. I think that's how I'm supposed to do that. What's my character's name? Lonk. Like, with an H. Oh, no! Shit! <laughs> uh... Okay, well... It's okay, I don't think anything's gonna respawn. I think I'm gonna run out of bastardizations of the name Link by the time I get to, to uh, the end.
How did I even manage that? What? Oh. <laughs> I was thinking, how am I going to get up there in a creative way? And I was thinking, just walk along the railing. But how about I just use the ladder? No, but then it still doesn't let me get up here. Okay, well. Oh. Okay, I think I remember this. I think that chest is the big key. And I have to come back later. Okay, but the fountains are all ready now, so... Wait, how do I open this floodgate? Oh, right. This is accessible now. thing. No, I can't climb on it. It might be later. Wait, this is just a dead end. Okay, now this is moving. <laughs> Wait, is that where it- no. That's where it came from. Wasn't there another door here? No, hang on. What am I looking at? I think I'm correct. Okay.
probably compass now, a map. And that's a key. Okay. The Zora symbol looks like graffiti. Just kind of one of those symbols that people draw when they're in school. Kind of like that S symbol that everyone seems to draw. Uh, I can't do anything here yet. Okay. <laughs> this dungeon has seven floors. <laughs> Just looking at the bottom screen. Has seven buttons I can press to change the floors. I mean, this game definitely had the most detailed link. I like the green armor. It looks good. I think they definitely had to add extra detail because of what happened with Wind Waker. At the time, people were just disappointed with the cartoon look. They wanted realistic Link, so they made this one really real. Uh... Oh, it doesn't? What? Okay. where I came from. What? Oh, okay. I see. I see. I wonder if I can squeeze in there. Uh... No. <laughs> oh, there! Alright, see ya, Laura. Yeah, I don't have time for you. <laughs> Boss? Hobbies. <laughs> but there's one more. Where to go? I don't hear it. No, there it is. No, me not. I know what you want me to do. Don't. 
You don't have to say anything. Okay, maybe you have to say something. What is it? I've got a bad feeling about this, can't you feel it? Take a look around. Oh. No, yeah, she's right. <laughs> they keep falling from the ceiling. You look up and there's a boss on the ceiling. You don't want... <laughs> you don't want that to land on you. Nothing. One more way. Keep pressing the wrong button. There we go. That's what I want. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay, let's get this dungeon done. Thanks to the GG. Uh, hang on, let me do that. There we go.
Yeah, what now? <laughs> Still got in the way. Can I get across that just by jumping? No. It's too far. I need to raise the water level one more time. I'm trying to remember where to go now. Oh. <laughs> map? Probably map. Mm-hmm. Okay. I should have grabbed that one sooner. If Tears of the Kingdom has any sort of water dungeon, I hope it's it's fun. And not just this thing where you have to go up and down multiple floors. It just seems to be the trend every time. Oh yeah, and also, hang on. Can I reach from here? Yes. Before I forget. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Whoa, camera. Jeez. Camera, you're drunk. Go home. Ah, oh, it doesn't quite reach. Tears of the Kingdom Water Dungeon will do pretty cool. What I'm hoping is they're just going to take the world that we had in Breath of the Wild and then just have more areas like Hyrule Castle. Just a big area that you can explore. I will be very, very disappointed if it's not that. There's no way they can just make it 120 shrines again. I feel like people would not be happy if that were the case. Like, it would have to be dungeons. You wonder if it'll be open world again? I think it'll be open world again. It's the same world as before, so it'd be weird to convert that over to a linear one. And, uh, I think our Norma was, like, 
saying that um the games would be open world for a while. At least while he's directing. So it'll be a while before we see one of these again. Don't think I can do anything here. Or can I? Have I played many? I'm playing through all of them until uh, Tears releases. I'm playing them in order of release. But before that, I had played most. The ones I hadn't played were Majora's, Wind Waker, um, and Skyward Sword. Oh, and that GameCube one. The one where you need a Game Boy Advance to play it. But other than that, I'd played most of them. This one I only played when it first came out, so, like, my memories of it are very hazy. I just remember not liking this dungeon. <laughs> the previous one I remember enjoying. But this dungeon in particular, there was just something about it I just did not like. But yeah, I'm kind of worried I'm going to run out of time. There's only a month and a half to go. And I still have six games after this one, if I remember correctly. You got into it four years ago and been able to play it almost every mainline. Oh, nice. Yeah, they are a good set of games. Didn't like this one as much, really? What didn't you like about it in particular? I mean, this one I find has really good storytelling. There's an entire left chamber I haven't been to. I need to flip the switch, I think. No, but that left chamber needs a key, so hang on. Okay, so where haven't I been? Wasn't the fan of the overall, didn't like the combat. I mean, fair enough to each their own. Dungeons are one of the best in the series. Yeah. They were pretty well crafted, these ones. Hmm. I need the compass, because then. I'd be able to point, I'd be able to go, okay, this is a room that has a chest, which means it most likely has a key. Hey. Oh wait, but doesn't that, ch that changes the flow of water as well. I think I remember that was the gimmick of it. Hang on. 
Oh. <laughs> Crap. Oh, now there's piranhas. Hey. Hey, Cookie. <laughs> Evil fish, yeah. Piranhas, yeah, don't don't mess with them. If you've ever seen any documentaries on them, they are savage. Like general genuinely scary creatures. Piranhas, Komodo dragons. And, um... Ugh, damn it, what's the other one? The one we have in Australia, which is like this blue ring octopus. They're tiny and the, they're, they're no joke. They look really nice. They're fluorescent. They look kind of cool, but if you touch them... Eh. <laughs> Komodo dragons, they have a lot of bacteria, so they bite their prey. And then they camp them out and just wait for them to die. Like, they'll they'll wait days on end for the bacteria to kind of do its thing. Oh, thank you for the follow. Gila monsters bites hurt. Gila monsters? I mean, I guess, but then, no, but this requires water. This is the part. I know there's somewhere I need to go with the hook shot, but I just need to remember where. It's a type of lizard, no kidding. Let me see. Oh. Native to the southwestern United States and northern Mexican states. Interesting. Just saying what makes it so... In the Old West, pioneers believed that a, num a number of myths, including that the lizard had a foul or toxic breath and its bite was fatal. But it has venom. Okay. Venom is produced behind its eyes. Ugh. The venom is normally not fatal to healthy adults. No fatalities have been confirmed after 1930. So, scary looking, but if you got bitten by one, you'd be fine. Do I just need to go to the lower level or what? What's up? Normally not lethal. Well, I mean, there's certain things that on average won't be lethal, but sometimes you'll get unlucky. Like, not to be morbid, but look at Steve Irwin. I mean, if you would have told me that that guy would have um, died to a stingray, I would not believe it. I didn't believe it when it happened. A lot of people didn't. That was one of those things that when I heard about it, I was just, I just did not believe that it was for real. I had to check two different news sources. Alright. This dungeon gives me a headache. It really does. <laughs> Okay, that's... Wait, no, stop. I can't get it to face the original doorway, like... What gives me a headache? This dungeon. Hey. 
I'm getting flashbacks of just why I didn't like it. I can't use hook shot. Can I use it to latch over there? I guess I can. Maybe this was the key the whole time. Okay, where am I now? What did it sound like I said? <laughs> that gives me a headache. Can't see a thing. Did I put myself somewhere bad? I may have put myself somewhere bad. Oh no, there's a pillar here. It doesn't look like there was any purpose to this room. Hang on. Alright, up. Just didn't hear the word. Oh, okay, fair enough. You know, so sometimes because of my accent people hear different things. not switches either. There has to be another. Like I know I know what needs to get done, it's just the room I need to go into, that's the problem I'm having right now. I need to get the water here. And it involves getting this floodgate to bring the water this way, but... <coughs> I've probably skimmed over the switch that I have to pull multiple times and someone's internally screaming right now. <coughs> See, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so like, let's assu assume it's here. But then here, I can't get through because of that. Okay, so what would be an alternate pathway to here? There's no hook shot from what I can see. I'm gonna hate the answer to this, because it's gonna be something that should have been obvious. Okay, so this pulls it to the direction. Oh. This might be it. This lets me get across.
Okay. But this doesn't have floodgates. This just leads to the entry. Let me just have a look around. I got up to this dungeon and it was like almost 1am. Any other dungeon I would have had the confidence to go do it right away because I was like yeah it'll take half an hour at most. This one I got up to it and I was like nah I'm not doing this now. That's not about to happen. that switch I have to pull. Excuse me. This one. This one. camera. Wait, does that really not turn it in this direction? <laughs> this is the part that I'm struggling with. I want it to do something, but it's not doing it, unless I just... Ah! There you go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Alright, we have... we have progress. <laughs> I'll just follow this down. Alright, not down. But this didn't, uh, just stop the turning. No, I, oh no, wait, this is correct. I'm like one floor lower. Okay, hang on. Gave me bombs for a reason.
doesn't look like I can latch. The only thing I can latch to is that. doesn't help. Link. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, I got over to the other side where I wanted. So this is what I was thinking of with this thing, that. <laughs> That's why I thought I couldn't beat it, because I remember that you had to hookshot them out, but I guess the bomb works too. Oh! Jeez, okay. Making sure there's nothing on the seabed here. <laughs> How long have I been doing the like bed temple? Uh an hour? Ish. Crap. I was running while looking at the other screen. I, uh, yeah. I never liked to this one. I just have memories of being frustrated in this dungeon. see something up above before I get that. That's just the floodgate. Alright, don't touch that just yet. <laughs> I find it funny that with this suit, for some reason, Link just does a diving animation sometimes for no reason. It's like, yes, dive into concrete. Just... Head first into concrete, that's smart. <laughs> There's still that other chest that was left. I'm gonna see if I can go get it.
I mean, the world's in danger, and here Link is going down a water slide. <laughs> Gotta have some fun when the world is ending, I guess. I just love how in Breath of the Wild, Zelda is just contacting you constantly. You know, telling you to be careful and please hurry, and then you kind of just go on all these tangents. Chasing invisible uh, leaf people. Down. happening. Oh, there's a chest on the other side, but I can cut through here. Wait, can I? No, I can't. I would have to go back. Or do I? Hang on. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. There's no way they're gonna get you to find 900 Koroks again. I just can't imagine that's gonna be a thing. I'm even still, like, on the fence about whether I want to find them all a second time. for a thousand no I remember that there was that one person that found them all within a few days so with no guides or anything just got them all it was like it was two days or something it was really quick and someone had found them all Can I even... I can't... Can I? Once I'm here, I'm screwed. I have to go back. <laughs> no, no, Link! Oh, I wasn't pressing down. I think this controller has drift on it. Someone pointed it out when I was playing Wind Waker. Um, I think they were right. Drift like a bit of lag. No, so like... The way these modern controllers are, they have something that eventually wears down and so even when you're not moving the controller it kind of registers like you are 
So the character will like slowly move in a particular direction if you're not pressing anything. And sometimes that slight shift might be the difference between registering, say, a down or a diagonal down, right? Joy-Cons are, are notorious for doing that, eventually. But uh, any controller from the PS4 era onwards do this because of what they've used for parts. And it's gotten to the point where, like, they're selling kits uh, for completely different thumbsticks. And they use parts that um, existed during the Dreamcast era. So it's like, it was a problem that has already been fixed, but, you know. Kids? What do you mean, kids? No, I said kids. Do I have to say it with, like, extra emphasis on it? They sell kits. Kits. Oh, they sell cats. Is that better? <laughs> I had a few Scandinavian people say that, that when I go, oh no! Like, it sounds like I'm saying no in, in Swedish or Norwegian. I can't remember which one. But, like, once they're like, ha, ah, you said no. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Say welcome to Walmart in my best American accent. I can't do that, though. The thing is, American accents come out southern eventually. Welcome to Walmart. See? It's, it just doesn't work. Walmart. It's alright, like... I have nothing to be ashamed of because the way Australians... ...do, um... ...American accents is probably as bad as Americans do Australian accents. Try Canadian? Sure. Sorry. There you go, there's my Canadian accent. I'll just apologize in advance. Because you have two kinds of sorry. You have sorry and then you have sorry. So the one's like a, a sincere apology and then the other one's a knee-jerk reaction. Where you're just apologizing for the sake of apologizing. I, I had a really good friend growing up who was Canadian. <laughs> so. I'm used to the accent. There is, I mean, it, it depends what part you're from as well, because I've heard some people from Canada talk like they're Americans with the exception of a few words. Okay, so now this is going... I don't want to mess with the, this. I need to go back into that central room. In your province, you don't pronounce T sounds, so... Wait. Also, apparently you say bag, lag, dragon, sorry. And about wrong. Huh. Well, wrong in the context of other Canadians, I don't know. Bag? Would you say bag? Instead of bag? Bag? Or getting a bit of lag there? I don't know. <laughs> that just almost sounded like it was from the UK or something. I don't know. Sounds like bag? Bag? 
Oh, I'll get the bag. Lag. Lag, lag. Yeah, no, I, I can say that. That's... Oh, okay. The word, there's certain words that I remember when I first started streaming, people wanted me to repeat because they thought I said it funny. Like, I guess to Americans it sounds weird, but you know, the way we say water. Oh my god, you say water, so weird. <laughs> we say water. You say water. W A D U H. God, oh, for fuck's sake. You like hearing Canadians pronounce a bag milk? Oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, there was this comedian, Nicholas Kroll, Nick Kroll, who does this, um, this sketch call where it's just, it's a high school drama set in Canada. And just says like a really, really Canadian sentence like, you know, wanting a loony for a bag of milk or something like that. Yeah, at least we don't say water, water like the Brits. No, but th that's like water. No, nah, but that's that's a particular accent. Not all of them say it. There are so many British accents; it's kind of crazy. Like Australia is a country that's pretty big. I mean, it's it's not as big as the US, but it's it's big. You'd be surprised how big Australia is. And yet, when it comes to accents, ours don't vary that meant that much. But then you look at the UK, a country that's not really or a set of countries that's not that big. The amount of accent variety they have, even from town to town is just kind of insane. Like, you know, west to east coast or like midwest and all that in america it's different here there's some difference but it's not as pronounced like i think the only notable difference is um in south australia here the southern state uh like instead of chance they'll say chance instead of dance they'll say dance so they sound kind of fancy when they have words with a in it but other than that I just like accents that I don't hear that often. That's, I think, how it is to me. Because that's the concept of exotic, right? It's like something that you'd never really hear. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> that's what I need to do. I just need to aim better. But you know what? Like, sometimes... I can understand the whole uh, Canadian thing because our Canadians are basically New people from New Zealand because they kind of speak that way as well. Like, instead of lagging, they'll say, oh, I'm lagging. Instead of fish and chips, it's fish and chops. Like, chips is like a, a U sound for some reason. Um, like a deck will be a duck. Get on it! Get on it! <laughs> Get on it! <laughs> Why won't it reach? Caribbean accents are wild. You avoid speaking to your family on the phone because you can't understand anything they're saying. Oh, really? I've heard a couple before in my lifetime. I think the the hardest accent I've had to understand was a, a very, very thick Scottish accent. 
And when you throw slang into the mix, man, it's just... Ah, oh, there it is! <laughs> it's just... It's really difficult. But I mean, otherwise, uh, I grew up in an area that was really, really multicultural. Um, it was pretty much the suburbs where most of the immigrants, uh, yeah, lived when they arrive in Australia, so... Did not have many Australian friends growing up. It was people from everywhere. So I kind of got used to the way uh, people from different countries talk with their accents. So I can understand most people pretty clearly. I think the thing that people find really hard to believe, at least for me, is, so, you know, my parents, Central American origins, but for the life of me, I cannot do, like, a Latino accent. I just can't. I don't know why. Even though I, I can't speak Spanish properly, or at least enough to survive, like, I'm not extremely good at it, but I, I just can't do, like, if they tell me to do one an accent from, like, say, um, what's that movie? There's like a few movies. Anyway, you know, Hollywood style accent. I, I can't. I don't know why. It just sounds... At a certain point, it's just a stereotype. To be honest, you didn't know Australia was popular with immigrants. Oh, it is. It's, it's a melting pot, dude. Particularly, uh, Melbourne and Sydney. Like... They, uh, took in a lot of refugees. And still do. So, like... One thing you wouldn't expect is, uh... You know, people think, oh, Australian... Australians probably don't have good cooking. It's like, nope. It's the opposite. I have to hit him here. This is a bad idea. Oh, please. Yeah, okay, good. I was gonna say, is that close enough? Yeah, it is. This dungeon is so long. Like Snowpick was more confusing. I don't remember Snowpick at all. symbol in the middle of the room. Just making sure it's not something that I can fall down. I think I, I got here too early.
Uh, was this where I came from? I think this is where I came from. Maybe. No, this is different. There's a chest at the end of this one, too. <laughs> Me trying to use a door without... Wait, wait a minute, where are we? Okay, I have to stop. Ugh. I'm surprised that that's not a thing. Okay, so what is this then? The chest in the middle of the room. Okay, I'm not overcomplicating it. I mean, I'm guessing it's just going to drain here. All right. <laughs> I feel like that should be more lethal than that. I don't know. Getting electrocuted on the water whilst wearing iron boots and having a metallic shield and a sword and... I don't know. I, I feel like that would be more lethal than that. Like, how much metal am I wearing, honestly? Find, you know what I find interesting in terms of accents as well? So, in terms of actors, I can name a whole bunch of British actors that do really good American accents, but I can't do the other way around. Like, I can't name American actors that do good British accents. Like, how does that work? There's some actors that you'd be surprised were British. So it lets me walk around the whole thing. It's just a dead end. Let's make sure. It looks like I haven't been in this room, so... Apparently not allowed to climb up. <laughs> There we go. Okay. <laughs> no, what I have been in this room. <laughs> I haven't done the point of this room where... That door there leads to a central room. Far too cold outside for the middle of March. You want to swap? Do you want some of that Australian summer? Looks 
please. You don't want Australian summer. People think they want Australian summer, but they don't want Australian summer. Most people would melt. I guess it depends where you're from. Like, you can be acclimated to warm weather. But I know a lot of people in Europe, for example, would hate anything remotely close to what I'm talking about. What is... Oh, that's not even... What's the weather for me? Uh, I'll have to convert it to Fahrenheit, but in Celsius it was 30 Celsius at like 10 o'clock at night last night, so you know. What is it? It's... I think 30 is the easy number to convert, but let me just see. 30 C... Yeah, I didn't press that button. I was just trying to... Yeah, 86 Fahrenheit. Keep it, keep it in mind at like 10 o'clock at night. So obviously after the sunset, it's still that hot. You felt 86 at night. Yeah, rarely, but I'm saying, imagine that's the norm. Like, you're getting that multiple times a year. I'd much rather deal with the cold. There's like plenty you can do to warm up, there's only so much you can do to cool down. And one day I will experience a, a real winter. I do want to do that at some point. <laughs> the coldest recorded temperature in Melbourne was uh, like negative two, and that was in the 1800s, so you know. I'm a little bit sheltered when it comes to the cold. Just, just a little bit. So that tunnel is not where I want to go. This is giving me a headache. I just hate stuff that goes around in circles like this. And I've probably gone past the solution multiple times. Okay, there's this. Alright, so what's in here? There has to be something I can do in here. But I missed. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> well done. Oh, yes! Complications! There's the boss key. You're always surprised when you meet Australians in mountain towns. It's always cold, and how the fuck did they learn to snowboard with no snow? Uh, there are mountains here that has snow. It's just we don't have common snow weather. So, like, the snow season here, you'll hear a weather report. And it'll go something like this. Oh, we have a bunch of rain that's going to happen this weekend. Beautiful start to the snow season. Just head on to the mountains with the family. You're going to get a few centimeters of snow. We'll turn on the snow machine. And, uh, yeah. Just get in there before the next weekend, because it'll probably be gone by then. But there are mountains that do have snow, it's just nowhere near what a real cold weather is like. It, do it just doesn't compare, but it's enough to kind of get the gist of it, you know? 
to do snowboarding and whatever. It's enough to do that. But it's definitely by no means real snow weather. You have to drive three to four hours to experience it, and it's not... It's really not that impressive. If, if I was to show any of you a video of a snow report, you'd laugh. Okay, so I think now that's it. Now I just need to align everything and then we're good. There is one chest that I missed. So hang on. Sorry. That one in the... There's that one. That's not the one I'm talking about. Wait, there's one at the entry too? Okay. That's not what I'm talking about though. It's on this room. That one. That's the one that I'm more interested in. I believe that one's probably going to have something important in it. Let's just make sure. Because in this one, the, there are chests with heart pieces in them. So there's one in the middle, which we're going to go. And then there's one... Apparently on the right room? Okay. Alright, we'll figure it out. But yeah, I mean, Australians are everywhere. It's just, for some reason, just like to travel, so. No matter where you go in the world, you'll come across one. Oh, okay. I should have dropped that. I can't believe this dungeon's going to take me an hour and a half to do. This is why I didn't want to do this last time. I, I knew it. I didn't think I would do much better. Okay. But, you know, it's still... It's still okay. It's not like those last heart pieces that I've had to deal with. The previous games. Just, I'm trying my hardest to not let that happen again this time. I am doing everything in my power to make sure that I don't end this playthrough by looking for a heart piece for like four hours. But I've been on top of them so far. Okay. Don't worry about that. Alright, so let's see. It's just one more puzzle here in the middle to get the water to rise. And then we're good. But before I do that, let me see. So from here... Go down a floor, apparently. Or go across and then down a floor. Alright, so directly across from me. And then down one. This is already ready. I don't even have to do anything, it's already ready. Um, in that case, I think the chest that we're talking about is... Yeah. There we go. Alright, that's one chest dealt with. Ah. <laughs> that does literally nothing. Um, it's a stamp that you can use on the Miiverse, which doesn't exist anymore. It's, it's long shut down, so... Basically a waste of time, but... Peace of mind, but it's not a heart piece. You love the stamps? Yeah, but they don't do anything. 
Not anymore. I'm sure they did something back in the day and great. She got to type in Hylian. <laughs> oh, I never did this. I don't know. What is this? I must have... Huh. There must have been some other solution to this that I just didn't know. Am I going to dislike this? Anyway. You know what I missed? The DS is picked their chat. That was great. Used to use that when I was in university quite a bit. We'd be sending drawings and stuff. So every other room's done, so then. How do... No. No, no, see, I have to turn it. I have to turn it. Okay, that's another... The DS primary was before you could form complex forts, right. Yeah, I forget how young some people are. I mean, that's fine. You know what made me feel really old? <laughs> Someone sent a, a video on on the work chat. And it was, um... Someone had two children, so... Someone in their 20s-ish, late 20s. And, you know, a small child. So they asked the, uh... The adult to show a gesture of, like, um, using a phone. And so the adult does, you know, the, the handset gesture, like I would. And then the child does, like, holding a mobile phone. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And then when they do take a picture, it's like, you know, the clicking of an old camera. And then the child just looks like they're tapping some invisible thing. And I was like, oh, man. Right. Yeah, that makes me feel old. Oh, like the fact that, um... So, you know, in computer programs, the icon that they use for saving, I asked a few of my cousins what that was. And they were like, the save icon. I'm like, yeah, but what is it a picture of? And they were like, it's a picture? I don't know, I just thought it was the save button. It's like, no, it's a picture of something. And yeah, just the fact they didn't know what it was. Did not know the struggle. The floppy disk? Yep. Yeah. The floppy disk. I'm a bit of a design nerd, um, so I've seen a lot of conversations, designers trying to come up with an alternative design for the save, but none of them really, they're, they're not good. Right, right, you're good at ancient history? Psh, come on, it's not that ancient. <laughs> I 
Okay, without looking up anything, I want you to tell me a game from a game in your mind from 15 years ago. What game? What game would you name that you would say would be 15 years old? And there's always a disconnect with that number and older. It's just for some reason. People imagine 15 years as, as being a long time ago, and then when you say 10, and then when you say 10 years, they imagine it to be much closer than what it really is. Xbox Viva Pinata. That's old. That's way older. Viva Pinata from the 360. Hang on, Viva Pinata. How old is that? that? That has to be old. That came out in 2006, so that's... That's getting up there in its years. It's like 70. But one that gets me, or used to get me, was like, you know, name a Zelda game from 20 years ago. And it, you can kind of name it, even if it was before your time. So, like, for me, 20 years in my mind is, like, a 2D Zelda. Like, you know, a Super Nintendo game or something like that. But no. Tw Zelda from 20 years ago is, like, the GameCube game. It's GameCube Zelda. Like, the GameCube was 20 years ago. This is the GameCube Zelda. Mm, bleh, I mean, technically it was released on GameCube, but the release date was during the Wii era, so it's considered a Wii game. The GameCube Zelda is Wind Waker. Okay, so hang on. I'm not going to go there. Give me a sec. Where is that? On- oh, oh, yeah, no, that's- Okay, so we need to go to the right chamber. So from here... Okay. So, this chamber over here. This is center, and this is right. By the way, I'd ra honestly, I'd rather be called old than young at this point. There's certain things that just... Every day I just feel more and more disconnected and just want to be called old. considerably older than you thought if that's what I'm, you mean. No, I mean I definitely get that a lot. Like, people don't think I'm as old as I am. Like, if people were to guess, they would say I'm, you know late 20s. Every now and then I will get, oh, you sound 25, but I guess maybe it's just because I guess young at heart. You would have thought 28. Yeah, that's typically what I get. It's kind of weird for me because, like, I always had to act older than what I was. So, like, as a teenager, uh, uh, yeah, I was in the smart class and then... I ended up being in university at the age of 17, so people were a minimum of three years older than me, so I always had to act older, and I was used to being the baby in the group every, every time. 
But now as an adult, it's kind of the opposite. It's just I'm getting, oh, what? You're not, you're, 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 thir you're over 30? What? How did that work out? My parents used to have to sign shit to get permission. It was not fun. But, I mean, yeah, I had my degree when I was 19, so... It was a positive, it was getting school out of the way. But then, there were a few negatives behind it, but we'll not talk about that. You didn't graduate until you were 21, but people still think you're 18. Yeah. It just depends on you as a person, like, it comes down to how you act and also, to some degree, how you dress as well. Take it you're the youngest here. I mean, maybe at the moment, in total, maybe not. I have no, I have no issue with, like, younger people watching, right? I think for me, it's, it's more of a, a state of maturity. It's got to do with being able to have a conversation, more or less. Like, if I can have a conversation with a person, it doesn't matter how old they are. You have grown-ass adults that act worse than children. So, I would never think, oh, just because this person's, like, a teenager, that they don't have something serious to say. And, I, yeah, I mean, I, I have first-hand experience where, like, people treated me different because I was young and thought that I didn't know shit. 38. Oh, you're not that far off from me. When you were young, people thought you were older than you were. I guess that comes down to just how you act. I definitely acted like an old person. I mean, I did shit that was immature for sure, right? But like, sometimes my reactions to things were just like an old person. I, I appreciated sarcastic humor quite a bit. So... 16? Ah, that's fine. <laughs> Definitely had people, like, around that age tune in, so... I mean, yeah, the way that I see it, if we can just talk about stuff, it's fine. This is a mature content stream. So, I, I tag it as that just to be... I'm not gonna say that I, I'm mature in the sense of like, oh, no fun allowed, everyone has to be serious, right? Like, we talk about weird shit in here sometimes and, you know, the sense of humor can be, uh, like a bit of a potty mouth, let's just say. I don't want to give specific examples, but I just say it in the sense of just... I, I believe in being transparent and honest, so to me, I guess, I don't want to phrase this in a way that's weird, because so, it's late at night, but I guess I'm not going to do anything that you would associate with, like, streamers that um kind of allow children of all ages in there, if that makes sense. Like, you know, they'll they'll say hi, they'll take interest in their schoolwork, and, um, I guess, it's not that they pretend to be their friends, it's just kind of that. I don't want to be harsh, but, like, I don't, I don't see myself doing that, because I, I, it's not me, like, I don't plan to be friends with, with, uh, kids, it's just, I just don't see that as something I would do. So that's why I tend to put that on there, it's just... I would hate for, you know, a kid to start watching me and then believe that. You know, that I'm their friend when I'm not. Am I gonna ban you? No, look, as here's, here's how I feel. I care about my chat as a collective, right? I want everyone to be well, to be doing well, and, you know, to enjoy their time here. And, yeah, be healthy, be good hope that things are going well for them. That's as a collective. But on an individual sense, it's kind of like... 
I would I would never be like, oh, you know, it's using the word friend that often. There are viewers that have become my friends, just to be clear. And I consider them very good friends at this point. But I'm not in the default position to say that with everyone. So it's like, I generally care about the people that watch me, but to the extent of a collective, not on an individual, individual use by use case, if you know what I mean. I mean, right away. Like, after some time, if I get to know that chat member a bit more, then yeah, it goes beyond that. But I think when it comes to younger viewers, and I know this because I know some of my cousins do this, um, sometimes they turn for, to streamers for friendship, and I don't know, I, I just, I don't find that I don't want to use the word honest because I'm sure there are some streamers that are sincere in being nice to younger a younger audience. So I don't want to shit on them, but like... If you take streaming out of the equation, I don't think they would try to make friends with younger kids, that's all. Alright, let's just get this rolling. Wait, do I even need to do anything? I think we're done. So, I don't know. Does, does that make sense? Am, am, I saying, am I saying it correctly or am I just, like, sounding like an asshole now? I've always believed in just being transparent about how I am. Like, I don't want to fake feelings or, you know, tell people that they are something to me when they're not, just for the sake of viewership. But, of course, when someone's important to me, I do say it. <laughs> Why not both? I mean, I don't mind. Like, it's fine. Why do I always try to articulate shit like this late at night, honestly? When you started Twitch a few years ago, it was just because you wanted to connect with people about games you liked. Yeah, I think connection's fine. That's... There's nothing wrong with that. Just to be clear, like, you can connect with people. But I think with streaming, there's quite a bit of a default position of, like, some people believing that when you join a stream and you follow a person, and very quickly you're, like, friends right away. I don't know. That might be the case in some, but for me, it... I think that that'll happen with a more adult audience. I'm speaking specifically about people under the age of, uh, like, 16. Define friend. I don't really want to. Because that's one of those things that's just like, you can... You can challenge it very easily. It's just... At a certain point, I'm coming up with... I'm drawing like an abstract line in the sand and defining friendship. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying for me, when it comes to a, a, a much younger audience, that's all. With adults, it's different. So, I hope I, I was clear about that. Need that? I I know I know I know what I need to do. I've, I... Okay, but like, I guess, in the context of streaming, the people that I've become good friends with, not just friends, the term good friend, are people that know about me more outside of the context of streaming. If that makes sense, like, you know, we've hung out or talked outside of this. Or we've maybe played games or something. Ah. You definitely have streaming you've gotten to know over time, but you've always had trouble discerning friends, even in real life. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, but... 
with with streaming it, it's it's different that's all that's that's the part that oh crap i got eaten that's the part that's always hard because there are people that genuinely make friends with their viewers very quickly all right and there's nothing wrong with that it's just but then for every person that does that there's others that i guess misrepresent the true state of that friendship you know what i mean like they're very quick to throw the word family out there and stuff like that what's the first zelda game the very first zelda game i played was the first one that was the one i grew up with but the one that I played the most was probably the Super Nintendo one. <laughs> uh, I always worry when I have these kind of discussions because I feel like someone out there is going to be just like, Oh wow, man. But anyway, my intent is I, I just want to be honest and not ever be in a, a state of just saying that I'm friends with someone or care about someone for the sake of that, keeping them as a viewer. That's all. So if like a younger audience member asks me if we're friends, I will probably say no. 90% of the time. Because that's the truth. Okay, I think I need it. Drop. Your first was a link to the past. Oh, a link to the past is great. It's definitely my favorite 2D one. I still have the cartridge. I think I need to swim. I know what I know. Meadna wants me to. I need to latch on and then stab. Got it. I mean, look at how brutal this is. I think A Link to the Past is a game that I don't think they'll ever have the guts to do a, like, a remaster of. Because I feel like that one is just held in such high regard, and I'm not sure how they would do it. There's a link between worlds, but that's not a remaster, that's a sequel. It's different. I mean, play A Link to the Past, I think it's timeless. And you, you get to appreciate the modern formula because that's how they got onto it. In that game, like, you know, they nailed the whole every dungeon has a theme and then, you know, the the item you get from the dungeon is typically how you beat the boss.
and time. <laughs> Two hours and 12 minutes. Okay, great. Yeah. This is why I don't do this dungeon um, on Monday. <laughs> oh my god. I still have to come back in here because uh, there's a chest at the start that I just want to make sure there's nothing in. Ocarina of Time is 25 years and you can't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of games that when you talk about how old they are. It's hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that the Switch is already six years old. Like, can we talk about that for a minute? Like... How is that six years old? There it is. Oh, the last few shadow. I'll just take that, thanks. Now don't resent me for all I've put you through. I need this thing. Besides, we have to do something about Zant, the one who thinks he is the king of shadows. His power is a false one. I'll prove it using these. Do you guys, having grown up with Ocarina of Time, actually think it's one of the best games ever, genuinely? Uh, I I see it as, like, it's it was a massive step forward for the genre. And I guess I have an appreciation for that, because... It's one of those things that, in retrospect, if you're, like, playing it for the first time nowadays, you might not find that as impressive, but, like... It's one of those games that inspired a lot of game developers of, you know, that have probably made some of your favorite games today. So that's why it's important. It's just, it was one of those games that a lot of people will say, you know, inspired them to get into making games or whatever. Like, it's just inspired so much different things. And that's why it's one of the best games ever. It's just because of its reach. And yeah. Maybe, maybe when you play it, it might not, you might not see that, but if you kind of look at the stuff that's come after it, it can't, it will, you'd, you'd be surprised. You'd find like origins and people saying, yeah, I played that game and, you know, I wanted to make something like that one day. But that's the thing. It's at the end of the day, you can't really say games like that had room for improvement because you can say that about anything right you can say that something has room for improvement but you can only say it within the technical limitations like there's only so much you could do on that hardware So, I mean, for me, I've, I've said this before, the gaming experience I'll never forget is playing Mario 64 for the first time, because up to that point, I had only played 2D games, really. Like, the closest I got to 3D was um, Star Fox, and that was just polygons that were in, like, a wireframe-type view most of the time. It wasn't really 3D. And then, you know... As a kid, going to some random shopping mall, and there's this weird controller next to this new Nintendo console, and I go up and play it, and then I see this game that I have been playing pretty much my whole life at that point, Mario, and then just running around in a 3D space and how fluid it was. I just, I haven't felt a leap like that technologically since. I just don't think I ever will. Even though there are, there are certainly other things that have increased in visual fidelity, right? I just don't think that sense of wonder and just wow, I just don't think I'll experience that again. <laughs> Sent!
Did you honestly mean to take an ancient and withered power like this and turn it against me? You are a foolish traitor, Midna. Why do you defy your king? My king? You who do nothing but abuse the magic of your tribe? You must be joking. How dare you? Are you implying that my power is our old magic? Now that is a joke. This power is granted to me by my god. It is the magic of the King of Twilight, and you will respect it. Man, I'm missing some of chat. This is the best game of the time. You still remember first to play that game. Yeah. But I think everyone kind of has that moment at some point. Am I made now? Did you forget? That beast is one of the light dwellers who oppressed our people. No matter how much you may desire otherwise, you will never be more than a shadow in their world. You cannot consort with their kind. But if we can make their world ours, Maidna, light and darkness will meet at last. Our tribe will take back their realm, and sweet darkness will blot out this harsh light. And that, Meadna, is why. I need you. Ugh, the saliva. Not just for me, but for all our people. Lend me your power. So be it. I will return you to the light world you covet. You liked Final Fantasy X as well. Now they have to a remake of that on Switch. I never played ten. I think I I played seven and then the one with lightning in it, which I think is was it thirteen? No, not thirteen. Wait, which one which one had lightning in it? There's been so many of those games, honestly. I love the title. Final Fantasy. No, it's not. It's not the last one. <laughs> I'm just being a uh, semantic here. It was 13? Okay, good. I got it right. I heard 10 was a good one, though. Lunk. Hero chosen by the goddesses. Go to the princess locked away in the castle. That princess holds the key that can unlock you from your shadow form. Yeah, she's sick. This this was sad. The music as well. And the rain. This this scene was just very upsetting. Wait, no, I missed the castle town. You play Final Fantasy one to ten and thirteen. That's that's dedication. I find the older Final Fantasies harder to get into. I don't know why. They play a bit different. Than the ones from uh, PlayStation and onwards. But I mean, now, hey, I, by the end of this, I'll be able to say I've played every single Zelda game. 
Uh, except for once. Ah, uh, but that one, it's kind of hard to play it legitimately. And of course, the uh, the main ones, the ones that Nintendo wants to pretend don't exist. Used to get, wait, well, used to have trouble getting through books with cats in them. Because you would get attached and cry when something bad happens. I mean, that's, that's human. Which Zelda did I not play? Uh, Four Swords Adventures on GameCube. It's the one where you had to have a Game Boy Advance. And you would use the Game Boy Advance as a controller. And four people could play it. It's a, it's hard to get that game. So it's expensive, and then you also need to have a Game Boy Advance to play it. I just hate the rain. I can't get comfortable whether I sit or stand. But other than that, I have a legit way of playing all these games. Like, I, I've been using cartridges, I've been using CDs, everything is legit. I'm not emulating. Everything else has been played. Legit. It's just that one, there's not that much story in it, and it's just too expensive. I mean, maybe one day. If the streaming thing allows me to, like, put more of a budget into it, then sure. But for now, as a hobby, I'm okay. Legal disclaimer stream. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Like, I've, I've shared my thoughts on piracy. Piracy are a result of things not being made available or things being put at an unfair price. If both of those things aren't an issue, then piracy does not happen as often. It'll still happen. It'll always be a thing. But piracy in high numbers are because of that. It's because the content's not available or because they're charging way too much for it. I need to get into the sewers. I forget how to do this. You only downloaded Paper Mario. Thousand you door. You legally own a disc once. Oh, your GameCube broke. It costs ninety-two to order. Yeah, no, that it's expensive. I do have a copy of that? I, because I got this um, analog pocket thing. I've really, really wanted Game Boy games, and Game Boy games are just expensive right now. Not all of them, but. There are some that are just stupidly expensive to acquire. Like Pokemon Crystal, ridiculous how much that costs to acquire. Mm, yes, I thought so. I could just tell, you know. I'm Louise. You remember meeting me in the shop before? I, Though I don't think we were properly introduced. In any case, I must tell you, I'm a bit puzzled as to why you look like that. Really, dear, you can't blame it on the humans for tossing you out the way you look. Oh, another patient. You certainly are a curious sort. Please. Please. Princess Zelda. You have Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and the DS. Yeah. I never had a Game Boy Advance. I wish I did. I was saving up for one, and then the DS got announced. But I didn't have many games growing up. So a lot of the ones that I got... Um, were later. I kind of bought them second hand just to get stuff that I couldn't play back in the day. Get through the window. The attic is connected to the castle's waterway. It's an old waterway though, so it could be a rough trip. Well, I suppose all that's left to do is make sure that the humans don't notice you. One game you tried to play on the real hardware was Superstar Saga. Something about playing older games as people did appeals to you. Yeah, I guess that's that's one of the things I will say, as well. Um, I 
Use the window. Yeah, I'm trying to. All right, the crate. There's just something about popping in a cartridge and just using the controller that was intended for the game. Particularly for me, like, the Game Boy stuff is... yeah. Even though the games have age, there's just something about them. They just have their own charm. But, I mean, I have a lot of the games that I, I wanted. There's just a few that I would like to get, but they're just too expensive. And expensive because these days, if you want to find the game secondhand, eBay is not really much of an option anymore. It's just full of people that make eBay a career. And not to shit on that, because, you know, if you want to have that as a job, sure. But, you know, when everyone's doing that, it just means the pricing on stuff is just way more than it should be. Oh, thanks for beating that ghost. Can I call you Doggy? Um, Giovanni, I became consumed by greed long ago and sold my soul to the, a dark creature that did this to me. I can't move. I can't go see my girlfriend. My pet cat, Gengle, is frozen on my head. I don't think I could be more miserable. I have to ask you a favor, Doggy. Can you find and defeat 20 ghosts that lurk in the dark for me? I think you can free the ghosts or the pieces of my soul from the ghosts that hold them. I'll be free. Oh, but it's raining out. So I don't think you can go outside directly. I'll open the door to the underwater, underground waterway to you. Once the rain stops, you can come at, back in here by digging around the front wall where the cats gather. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do before. The best place to look is, is definitely like flea markets and thrift stores, but it's, it's hard. And, I mean, look at the Pokemon games, for example. Like, the ones on DS. Some of them are going for 200 bucks. And this, we're talking about the world's largest franchise where, you know, so many copies of those games are sold, but these career sellers, they just buy them and then they try to sell them. A ridiculous markup, and they just keep buying more of them. I remember, <laughs> I'll say this like someone, someone that I, um. I mean, they're a friend, but not someone I hung out that often. Um, they found out that I was streaming. And, you know, caught up once. And they asked what kind of stuff I played, and then, you know, I just set out a bit of everything. And, um... They asked if I played retro games. I'm like, yeah, I do. And then, you know... They... Sorry, I'm trying to think and talk at the same time. <laughs> they were asking me, oh, are there any games that you want to play soon? And this was at the time. I still haven't done it yet. But I was like, oh, I kind of... I've been feeling like playing Donkey Kong. So I kind of want to play through the original three Donkey Kong games on the Super Nintendo. And, you know, dude was like, oh, do you have them all? I'm like, nah, I, I have one and three, but I don't have two. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, I, I I have a copy of two. I usually sell my games on eBay. It's like, oh, okay, cool. And then he was like, yeah, I'll, I can sell you a copy if you want. I'm like, oh, yeah, how much? And then he goes, 150. I'm like, uh, no. He's like, what? But that's what it's worth on eBay. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to pay you what it's worth on eBay because I think that's bullshit. 
wanted 150 bucks for it. I'm like, no thanks, dude. I'm, I'm good. Am I, did I light the torches for no reason? There's one more torch. Where, where am I missing a torch? Maybe overreacting, but scalpers are some of your least favorite people on earth. Yeah, I mean, scalping's no good. I don't like it. And in some places, it's illegal. But it's the kind of thing where, like, the mentality of scalping can extend to ridiculous lengths. Like, there are people that have been known, for example, during disasters to get bottles of fresh water and then sell them or ridiculous markup, just taking advantage of situations like that. And yeah, I mean, it's a different extreme, but it's the same kind of mentality is just taking advantage and you're not really wanting the stuff that you're buying. Like when people bought hand sanitizer and resold them. Dude, here, toilet paper in 2020. There were people, they, like, a lot of stores started restricting how much toilet paper you would buy because people were stockpiling that stuff up and selling. Like, ugh. Okay, so it is here. Oh, come on. We got onto the point where people buying from eBay aren't playing the games. Just reselling at a markup and their customers are people that do the same. It, kind of, and it's also because streaming is a big thing. Streamers will buy games like that because, you know, it's part of their job. Um, some of that stuff you can, if you set up a business properly, you can make it a tax deduction and just be like, yeah, it was for content. So they're kind of taking advantage of the streaming boom as well. But the thing is, much like many booms, there will be a crash eventually. It's just a thing. It's just going to happen. It'll normalize. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just, I, I love games. I always have. And I, it should be apparent in the sense that, like, I play so much different things. And I can talk about games that I played as a kid or things that I like as an adult. Um, it's just one of those things that I got told. Um, if I wanted to do design work at all. The best advice I got was to experience as much different media as I could, and that covered games. So, you know, I, I have an appreciation for stuff, and I want to experience things, and it's kind of crappy if you're, like, that kind of person that just genuinely loves games and wants to maybe play something that you didn't get a chance to play when you were younger, or perhaps before you were born, and then these dudes on eBay just basically make that not a reality. And in the grand scheme of things, they're probably not making as much as they would think they are. Because when you take inflation into account, like... <laughs> I'm almost convinced that people do Korea eBay selling for a while and they inevitably stop. And then someone else thinks it's a good idea and then take over for that person. That might be a hot take, but... I just feel like with that, there's a limit as to how far you can take it. Isn't- I thought this was a dig. Oh my god, because I didn't- I didn't do that. Just make sure I'm at the top of the pyramid when it crashes. <laughs> I don't- I don't want to be pessimistic, but you know. I've come to accept that it's- it's unlikely that I'll ever get anywhere remotely close to the top of a, a pyramid. 
when it comes to streaming. I think I just started like 10 years too late. But also, you know, I'm not exactly doing everything in my power to make it a reality either, because I got a full-time job. It's a lot harder to turn streaming into a full-time thing nowadays, so... I just don't want that stress. I'll be really grateful and happy if m maybe it does happen one day, but... Uh, yeah, I guess I don't really have a reason to believe that it will. Not to sound, like, down or anything. I'm very happy with what I have. And grateful, right? But just, yeah, the numbers. <laughs> the numbers don't lie, chat. There's like... At almost 6 million streamers, and then the number of partners on Twitch is something like 55,000. So it's less than 1% that make it to that point. There's just too many people streaming. But, you know, I'm always appreciative of anyone that spends their time here to any extent. Especially when I change my games up a lot. Just having that freedom, you have no idea how much that does mean to me. Just not feeling pressured to do something in particular. To be honest, you can only watch because I, you work from home now, mostly. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, the, uh, the Australian time zone is not great. I know this, and... The very first thing I would have to do if I wanted to take this seriously would be to do what other Aussies do, which is... Get up super early. So then you get that sweet spot where it's nighttime for Europeans and... It's daytime for Americans. And that's what you have to do, but I'm just not at that point. I forgot if that, I don't think that was worth anything. There was one point where you put Australia on the filter because you wanted to watch streams in the morning. <laughs> oh, really? No, so Australian East Coast, um, like prime time for us, it's pretty much after midnight for America. And then it's, it's morning for Europe, depending on the time zone. So for me, it's like uh, this time right now, like it's, it's midnight here. And usually around this time, this is when people start showing up. Honestly, in an ideal world, I'd be able to say, uh... Like, you know, I don't have to start work at 9 the next day. I'd be able to say, hey, listen, I want to start work at, like, say, midday and end at 8 o'clock at night. Or something like that, but it's just, it's, it's just, I, you can't do that realistically. I've got a flexible job, but not that flexible. And even then, then I would have no time for myself, so it's like, it's hard. Alright, we're here. I swear, I don't know if I remember this correctly, but in the original she looked more ghost-like, if that makes sense. I feel like she was semi-transparent. But maybe I'm not remembering, it was a long time ago. Please, please tell me, how do we break the curse on this one? 
This is the one. You need him to save your world. That's why, Princess, please, you must help Lunk. What binds him is a different magic than what transformed him when he passed, first passed the Curtain of Twilight. It is an evil power. Our world is one of balance, just as there is light to drive away darkness, so too is there benevolence to banish evil. Head for the sacred grove that lies deep within the lands guarded by the spirit Farron. There you will find the blade of evil's bane that was crafted by the wisdom of ancient sages, the Master Sword. The Master Sword is a sacred blade that evil can never touch. Evil cloaks you like a dark veil, and that blade is the only thing that can cleave it. <laughs> Lunk, hero sent by the goddesses. Like you, I have been granted special powers by the goddesses. Fine, Lunk, you can get to the woods on your own, right? Princess, I have one last request. Can you tell him where to find the Mirror of Twilight? Meedna, I believe I understand now just who and what you are. Despite your mortal injuries, you act in our stead. These dark times are the result of our deeds, yet it is you who have reaped the penalty. Accept this now, Meedna. I pass it to you. Yeah, I mean, by comparison, Breath of the Wild really doesn't have a story, does it? <laughs> we go back, Lunk, back to Farron Woods. Zelda, I've taken all that you had to give, though I did not want it. I mean, it has a story, but I mean, by... Comparing it to this, it's just nowhere near as in depth. I think Breath of the Wild was like the start of something that the series needed. And now it just needs that extra part that makes the series great. It just needs the part where like story and dungeons are back. And I'm hoping that it'll it'll be dark, and it looks like the new one's gonna be dark. Needed, never been offended. What? Because I'm just saying, like, that's one. All right, look at it this way: the Pokemon games. Say what you will about the new ones, and I've said what I've said about them. They are buggy, and they really should have had more development time, but they do represent a change that the series needed. And whatever the future holds, based on that change, should be good. It's the same with Breath of the Wild. It's like, yeah, look, like, there are certain things I can agree with that we're lacking. I still love the game, but you know, it was pretty light on story. Um, there were no dungeons, and... Yeah. 
Unpopular opinion, you don't like Breath of the Wild. That's not as unpopular as you would think. I, un I understand why. I, I understand the critiques of the game. But the thing is, at least it's it's a it's a direction of change. And I think if they were to take the foundation that was set in Breath of the Wild, which is that big open world, and then just expand upon it, then I think they're onto something good. That's all. So we'll see what Tears of the Kingdom brings, but if it's if they take the world of Breath of the Wild and then they kind of round it up a bit more with l more storytelling and actual dungeons, then I think it's going to be great. Aww. The music is very subjective. That one is more subjective. Because I, I kind of liked the, mu the muted music a bit more when exploring. Like, that one's a personal taste thing. The dungeon thing definitely is, is critique. Anything to do with, like, combat, dungeons, yeah, it's critique. No hookshot? Yeah, but there's other stuff that made up for it. There are other games that don't have a hookshot and they're still pretty good. That one... nah. <laughs> It doesn't have to have the hook shot to be good. The durability system. That one was always going to be unpopular. I think they need to tweak it. I don't mind it. But I can understand how it's frustrating. Did I just go around the long way? I may have gone around the long way. Doesn't matter. We'll take the scenic route. Unless I run into a literal brick wall, which is possible. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't they take the bridge out? Wait. Oh, for fuck's sake, I could have walked. Alright, well done. I don't know, for some reason I just, I thought Meedna was still injured, so I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt Meedna. I don't want to strain her. <laughs> well, we could have just done this, okay. The durability system is just something you gotta get used to, that's all. Is it, is it well done? I don't think so. There's room for improvement, but I don't think they should just straight up remove it. That might be unpopular, but... You know, people used to say similar things about the stamina system when it first came into use. They were like, well, this game has never had stamina before, why do we need stamina now? And it's the same with the durability thing. It's just one of those things you'll get used to. And it's fine, it just needs improvement. But I remember people got up in arms over the stamina system as well. And now it's just rarely mentioned. And yeah, I mean, in terms of winning over, it depends what you like, like... The first Zelda game I played was the first one, and that was... 
kind of the same thing. You got thrown into a world and then you had to explore it. And to some people, that is the wow factor, is that you get presented with a large world and then you can do whatever you want. You go explore. And then there are others that don't, uh, yeah, don't like that kind of thing. Or maybe it's just they need something like being guided through something and then, you know, they fight a big boss and that's their wow factor. To each their own. Breath of the Wild is just one of those things that you need to give it time and play through it. And I hate to say it, but like with this, it's it's a matter of consensus, and the consensus on that game leans more positive. More positive. It's not really. It's not really something that's fifty-fifty. And you're fine to form your own, own opinions of it, but, like... As a whole, the game was pretty well received. Right, I gotta do that. You feel bad, you can never get into Breath of the Wild. No, I think, like, the way to, to say it is that it's not your cup of tea. I wouldn't call the game boring or bad. Like, because that kind of makes it sounds like... It's just, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put this. Like, when I don't like a game, I phrase it in the way of that I... It doesn't gel with me personally. Or that, you know... That I didn't like it, but I can understand how others did. Right? Unless the game is truly objectively horrible, I won't say a game is bad. And that's the case with Breath of the Wild. It's like, you can say that you didn't like it, that it was boring, that um, you thought certain things were bad, but the fact of the matter is that game was critically acclaimed. So it's like, it's not that the game is bad, it's just that it's not your thing and there's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't your thing. You just didn't get into it. Wait, let me catch up. Um, you find Shadow the Hedgehog for the GameCube to be irredeemably bad. Yeah, I don't know. I can't talk about that one. I never got into Sonic games because I didn't grow up with Sonic. Got to Divine Beasts, then stopped. Didn't even get to Blights. Yeah, but that's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just you not enjoying the game and it's just because it's not it's not something you like and there's nothing wrong with that i think the part like if you've ever expressed an opinion on the game i think the part people take issue with is when you call something bad when it isn't really it's just that you didn't enjoy it So like that's that would be my recommendation if you're afraid to express your opinion about the game is just if the game was well received on the grand scheme of things, right? Then you just say it as yeah, I didn't personally enjoy it. That's it. But I can understand how other people enjoyed it. And then people are more willing to accept your opinion of not enjoying it. But calling something bad or boring when it isn't really... That's, that's how, yeah, people take issue with it. Since you're so nice, let me tell you something. There's... 
a really pretty wooded area on the other side of that cliff. I climbed over there, but when I tried to get deeper into the woods, those guys attacked me. What's in those woods anyways? You feel bad because people are calling it the best game ever, or better than Ocarina. But I guess that one's, that one's an opinion. That one's like, it's subjective. Because the concept of best is on a personal level, and you can't really refute that. It's like, you know, to me, the best Zelda game is A Link to the Past. And that's just my opinion that I think it's the best, just because that's the one I have the most nostalgia for. That's the one that I feel like I enjoyed the most. But do I think that everyone should believe that? No. So when someone says that a game is the best, they're just saying, at least on the surface level, they, they think that, you know, it's something that was above and beyond what they expected. And that is the truth for them. So I, I wouldn't take it personally, or like, not personally, but too serious when someone says a game is the best. Especially if you disagree. Like, or when someone's talking about the best, it's from a place of nostalgia. And it's from a place of just... An experience that that person had that you won't ever be able to relate to. You might be able to agree with them in the sense that's like, you know, two people can say that the game is the best, but their experiences are, are not going to be the same. And, you know, they agree that it's the best, but it's probably for different reasons, right? It's, you see that, you see these lists ever, like, always, right? That talk about the best 50 games ever. And that, you, you just can't do that. Because it's just, it's one of those things that's just best 50 based on what? Right? It's all it's got to do with is just nostalgia. At least this is what I think. It's like when, <laughs> if you ask people what the best console is right now, do you think you'll get a, a good discussion going? Uh, no. And it's the same with best game, it's just, someone's gonna disagree, and they're gonna disagree and think, oh no, this person is trying to say that this is fact. And it's like, no, that's not what they're trying to say at all, they're just, even if it sounds like it, it's, they're saying it's the best because it's just something that they hold in high regard personally, and that's all you should ever see it as. So when people say Breath of the Wild is the best, just be like, okay, yeah, they really enjoyed Breath of the Wild. I didn't. That's it. <laughs> That's all. Oh. I've seen these everywhere and I completely forgot about it. I need to do more of these. I've, I, I haven't done these. Or like you could call Wind Waker best because of you playing with your mom like that. Yeah, well, you could just say Wind Waker is the best, right? And I can, I can take that at face value. I can be like, I can, I had my experience with Wind Waker and I can disagree, but I'm not going to be like, what? Why do you think Wind Wake is the best? How can you think that that's the best? I would never say that to someone. Unless... <laughs> unless... Unless someone is like... Those games that they made for the, the CDI. I can be like, okay, why do you think the CDI games are the best? But someone saying Wind Waker is the best for them. I, I can understand that. It's, it's just... There's a piece of nostalgia there. There's a story. There's... A reason why they enjoyed that game more than others, and I can accept that. And Wind Waker was a good, a well-received game. The teachings of old pass to you. Take sword in hand and find me. Okay. I need to do more of this. There's so many that I've missed, but now that I got the transformation, I guess I need to think. 
Ganondorf had a good personality in Wind Waker. Yeah, I, I kind of liked Ganondorf in Wind Waker. I'll agree there. But I think when it comes to um, to the Legend of Zelda in particular, I think it's highly contentious for two reasons. One is like people have a real hard time believing that there are people out there that haven't played the series or that they don't enjoy it. And the other one is just what is considered the best Zelda game. Oops. I messed that up. I still- it's pretty lenient, but I did mess that up. So you have memories of Wind Waker because your mom played it with you. Even when you went to bed, your mom took over. See, that's a nice memory. But I guess, yeah. When some- if you were to say it was your favorite game, I wouldn't ask you to explain it to that extent. It would be something that I would just accept. It's like, yeah. You think it's the best game. Happy for you. Or the best Zelda game, anyway. I think this one has some of the best storytelling, in my opinion. And I do enjoy the dungeons in this one. But see, this one I consider one of the best for me, because this was the first 3D one I played. So, you know, if you if if you ask me what are the best Zelda games for me, I will I will say A Link to the Past, um Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild. Those are the three not necessarily in that order, but those are the three that I would name as like the best. Now, A Link to the Past, it's my childhood, it's like it's the one that I played the most. I have so many memories of that game, and it's iconic, right? This one, this was the first 3D one I played. It was also the first console that I purchased. I had a job, and I was able to buy games for once. Um, it wasn't a... It was the first console I purchased that was for its generation, you know? Like, before, it was always a hand-me-down, or maybe we got the console way later in its life, or it was cheaper. But that- but yeah, I mean, I had a lot of nostalgia as a result, just playing through this one. And just have this extra level of love for it. And that's why I consider it good, because there's a bunch of stuff that I can reminisce about. The story and the characters and the dungeons had- had more of an impact for me because of the other stuff that was going on in my life at the time. So sometimes that answer is more- is- is less about the game and more about what you experienced. It can be both, but yeah, like... Personal experience is a huge factor when it comes to saying something is the best. And just remember that when talking about games. No matter how, we ought to, uh, hang on, lay down and feel the dark energy. I did, though. Unless there's one more. If we're talking about nostalgia and experiences, Minecraft wins. Okay, chat, listen, listen here. I've played Minecraft, but I couldn't get into it. It's not my thing. I recognize why that game is good, and why people love it, and why people hold it in high regard. But my experience of Minecraft is, I played it on my own, and... I just... I didn't have as good a time. I I personally enjoy Terraria more, but that's my- that's me. 
I have my reasons. But see, when someone talks about Minecraft as like, you know, being large, I'm not going to say, I don't get why you guys like Minecraft. Just because I didn't personally enjoy it, like... I can put that aside and be like, yeah, there's a reason people play this game. There's a reason people play it a lot. There's a reason why people play it with their friends. Like, I can see that. It's just, for me, I didn't get that experience. So, and even if I did, like, the whole multiplayer thing, I think I would enjoy Terraria more. That's just my hunch. But if you talk about Minecraft being a really good game, I'm gonna say anything bad or be like nah what are you talking about what's the appeal over terraria over minecraft i mean at the end of the day right like personal taste but um i'll talk about a couple of reasons that i i personally enjoyed it more for one um because you know i i grew up in the 90s uh the 2d art style it's something that I guess reminds me of that time, right? Nostalgia again is a is a is a big seller. But outside of that, um, when I went exploring in Terraria, like you know, you, you start digging, um, and you go somewhere, walking into a cave, you'll come out of that cave with something, like whether that be a weapon or some item that you've never heard of or something weird and mysterious, or you might run into some traps or something. Um, and this is based, just to be clear, this is based off, like, a few years ago when I played it. I'm not saying Minecraft doesn't have that stuff now, maybe it does. But when I played it, going into a cave in Minecraft, I went there for ore. And that was pretty much it. And then, there was this whole thing where, like, to progress, I was like, okay, what do I do? And then someone was like, okay, you need to enable the developer console so you can see what depth you're at. Or get this, so you can see what depth you're at. Then you need to dig to this particular depth and collect this. And I guess, compared to Terraria, that was just cl clunky. I'm sorry. Like, Terraria, it was... You would spawn bosses and you would fight them and it... Whilst, I'm not gonna say Terraria is extremely clear. You still have to rely on the wiki a lot. Um... At the very least, exploration felt more meaningful to me. So, that's why I personally enjoyed Terraria more. And I'm not saying Minecraft is a bad game, just to be clear. It just, it just wasn't for me. I don't think you necessarily had to grow up with Minecraft. I think... I have cousins that are in that age group of, like... You know, being able to have grown up with Minecraft, but they don't like it. They prefer Terraria. Like, I have a cousin straight up that prefers Terraria, and it's pretty much for the same reasons that I said. It's just... Exploration felt more meaningful to me. You don't understand what part of Breath of the Wild people like. Say that stream where they're playing Breath of the Wild is just boring. Right, but that's that's your opinion. That's just what you find exciting. That's the thing. Like, let's let's put it this way. Take take uh say some all right. Say something like chess or golf. Things that typically aren't associated with excitement. There are people that find that exciting, and they have their reasons why they find it exciting. It like there's a part of the brain that it appeals to. And just because it appeals to your- doesn't appeal to your side of the brain doesn't mean that it's boring. It just means that it doesn't appeal to you. And it might never appeal to you. So you, you can't say you can't understand why it's exciting. It's just- it's just- it just is what it is. It's like, it's exciting because... I'll- I'll describe it as best as I can. Because I grew up with Zelda 1. And it's the same feeling, Is like... You get dropped into a world, you don't really get told what it is, and it starts off small. And you're kind of giving, like, this sandbox thing to kind of play around in. And, you know, you learn a couple of lessons. And then you get presented with, like, this wide world. Where you, you can just go explore it, you can go in any direction you want. And pretty much anywhere you go, you'll find something. 
And just the fact that you have that ability to explore, that's something that appeals to a particular part of your brain. So with some people, not with everyone. It's kind of... <sighs> All right. Consider this. There are people that will say the same about Minecraft that'll say, I don't get what you enjoy about Minecraft. How can you find that entertaining? And that's the reason. It's just because it... It's just... It's something where unless it appeals to you, you're never going to understand. And that doesn't mean that the game is boring or unappealing. It just means it's not for you. It's just one of those things where you don't need to understand it. All you need to do is just accept that there are people that like it and it's popular enough to be good. And just because you can't find enjoyment in it or like understanding why other people enjoy it, you don't need to stress about that. Just... Focus on the games that you do enjoy. What is happening here? I think at the end of the day, like, everyone's looking for the same thing, right? Video games are a, f a form of entertainment. They're a form of escapism. And... Yeah, I mean, there's no need to understand everything. But I think the fundamentals are all there. At the end of the day, like, you're playing a game to have some fun. You're playing a game to have some fantasy or maybe hang out with friends. Like, it's universal in that regard. And that's all that should matter. Don't, don't ever think it. Don't try to, uh, figure out. There's no minimap here, okay. Oh, here we go. There's... That's the thing that I'm trying to get to. Okay, hang on. Hang on. I need to... Forgot what I have to do for this part. Don't worry, I'll, I'll I'll vaguely remember. I think I just have to get up there. Gotcha. And then disappears, and I gotta follow him again. Yeah, okay. This rings a bell. Go away. <laughs> anyway, I hope like what I was talking about didn't sound like a lecture too much chat. <laughs> But I, I find that in gaming, it's just this thing where it, it comes up pretty often where people just are very quick to just say, well, I don't get why this people enjoy this. Whether it be just from like a, a fundamental point of view where some people are like, how can you play games? Or to just consoles or just a genre or just a game in general. It all comes down to the same thing as like, it, they all fundamentally do the same thing to a person. It's just in a different way. I mean, 
I grew up in an era where like gaming wasn't yet fully accepted the way it is right now, so. You know, I'm always appreciative to be able to talk about this stuff. Cause I growing up I never could. I mean You know, people played games, but at a certain point you were considered just a nerd or a loser if you played games. And I think if, like, a younger version of me could see that, I could talk about the thing that I like the most in this way, yeah, I'd be happy and less worried. Mm-mm-mm. <sighs> I don't know, man. Life's too short to try and figure out why people are enjoying something and you're not. It's just... It's, stick to the things that you enjoy. Focus on that. And just be kind to everyone else. It's a lot easier that way. All you have to do is just say, yeah. That's, uh... That's what you enjoy? That's great. That's it. You don't need to understand why. Other than they share the same fundamental wants. Which is to just have fun, maybe play with some friends or with some people. It's just a form of escapism. It's like, you work hard, maybe you work hard, maybe you study hard. Maybe at the end of the day you just want to chill and you find a way to do so. What do I want from a game? For me... Uh, I mean... I like experiencing games for different reasons. I like... I like games that... make me stop thinking. I like games that make me think. I like games that are weird and visually interesting. Or that are just there for like an art style. Or maybe just one simple mechanic that's just fun and entertaining. I play everything, and that's like, the tr in the truest sense, like... Aside from games that have become, you know, heavy commercialized and monetized, so... Sports games and shooters like Call of Duty. But even then, I, I, ha I have played those kind of games before, when they were in their pure state, right? When they were just sports games, when they were just shooters and not, um, ways to make money. So, I just enjoy the medium. For me, it's a way to kick back. Um, it's a way to relax. It's a way to be able to talk with people, because... I mean, the people that I get along with the most are... ...ones that share the same interests as me. Or just like to talk about this kind of stuff. And I just want to find more people like that. And, yeah, that's... That's it, man. <laughs> it's just games that facilitate that. There are some series that I'm loyal to. Zelda's one of them. Like, I think... I will always... I'll always buy a Zelda game. I can't see myself not wanting to buy one. You love Shin Megami Tensei for the same reason you dislike other RPGs. I've heard of that series, haven't checked it out myself. There's so many games that I would love to have the time to check out, but it's just, there's only so much time. But, I mean, I like hearing people talk about stuff as well, so sometimes I'll tune into a streamer and that's the way I'll experience the game, is through them. Because I, I probably won't play it myself. It's not to say the game is bad, it's just there are other games that come out and there are other games that I want to check out. Mm. 
And I guess that's the cool thing about streaming as well, is like... I can say that there are games now that I have nostalgia for, just not because I play them, but because I watch someone play it, and... It has a memory, you know? Don't you dare! Hehehe, <laughs> bye. Okay, we got through it. I'm so glad this is lenient. If there is anything you need to know be about me, chat, is that I suck at rhythm games. I'll still play them for your entertainment. <laughs> In fact, I got another one that I'm gonna play at some point. That was for the DS. I got Rhythm he Heaven. But, uh, yeah, I, I am no good at them. <laughs> we are the guardians of this land. Guide us to where we once stood. Only then can you enter the sacred grove. Okay. So you get a collision if you do that. Just to make the rules of it clear, right? Well, anyone that hasn't seen this, I don't know. Set up by doing that. Mess it up, but we'll see. It's this bottom one that I, I got in the wrong spot. Reset it. Oh no, that works. Okay. I thought that reset as well, but I guess not. I'm probably not doing this in the most efficient manner. Is also like very light hills.
so close. I need to make this one go this way. Okay, uh... Wait, no, down one. Then across. There we go. Probably could have done that faster, but... Go now to the sacred place, beast. We yield passage to the sacred grove. Alright, on the topic of games, which game do you think has the best soundtrack? Or series. You can say series as well. See, this is another one, and I say if we talk about best, I'm not saying truthfully the best. In your mind, what do you like the most? <laughs> Worst Guardians ever. Persona? Persona pop up a few times. For me... I've really enjoyed uh, the Mega Man series. And Castlevania. Probably those two are the ones that I think are the best for me. Memphis. The sword accepted you as its master. I mean, I, I love... Look, I love Zelda. I do, and I think its soundtrack is great. However, there are certain tracks within the collection of Zelda music that I don't like. For example, um, which one was it? Was it in Ocarina or was it Majora's Mask? But like the, the jungle theme in that, it may have been Ocarina but it just has like this weird whiny sound in the background and it's just super repetitive. Like you can tell it's looped. Usually the dungeon music, like I can't, I can't tell that it's playing, but with that dungeon in particular, um, I could just, I just felt it. You know what I mean? Or is it with Mega Man and Castlevania? It's very hard for me to name tracks that I didn't like from those, those games. Um, hang on. In fact, I'll, I'll find it so you know which one I'm talking about. Hang on. Ocarina. I'm, um... It might be Ocarina. Let's see if it is. Forest Temple. Yeah, this one. I, I really did not like this song. The start of it is fine. I think, like, it has a nice vibe, but then when it gets to... Let me skip forward. This part. I just... I hated that. I, I absolutely hated that theme. Just that, that part... That part right there... I could just tell that it was looping, and I just, I couldn't take it. Anyway, this thing is the embodiment of the evil magic that Zant cast on you. It's definitely different from our tribe's shadow magic. Careful, if you touch it, it'll turn back into a beast. This thing is too dangerous. It's probably best if we just leave it here, huh? But on the other hand, if we kept it, you'd be able to transform into a beast anytime you wanted. Yes, yeah, since Zant was kind enough to give this to us, we should be thankful and use it all we can. If you need it, call me. I want to keep a low profile, so I'll hide in your shadow when you're human. But I can change you whenever. You can be a wolf anytime you like. Also, thanks to this thing, you can warp whenever you want by switching into wolf form. 
Hey, but listen, Lunk, I've got a little favor to ask. Would you mind coming with me to find something called the Mirror of Twilight? It's hidden somewhere in Hyrule. Yes, the Mirror of Twilight, our last potential link to Zant. I don't know what game was the best, but usually listen to Sonic or Mega Man, also Crypt and Necro Dancer. Okay. Wait, you love the Forest Temple? Really? I mean, it's fine if you do. But I, I have stated my reasons as to why I, that theme in particular. I just, uh, oh man. I think the start of it sounds good. It's just when it gets to that part where it's making those weird noises. After being in that dungeon for a while, it just it just stood out. I just could not hear anything else other than that. But the other thing is, I mean, for me, I, I never played Ocarina properly when it came out, so. Understand that for anyone <laughs> watching this later. And it's like, how could you not like a song from Ocarina of Time? Okay. Which means there's probably another one. Usually the area, if I remember correctly, has it in pairs. I just need to look. I'll look carefully. this lead outside. I should probably go back. <laughs> I'm worried that I missed the bug. Hang on, we'll, we'll, we'll just look around real quick. But then again, there's not really anything else, like unless it's on this side. Nope. You're a sucker for things that have a lot of mystery and lines to fill in. I like games where you start with nothing and kind of slowly but surely build your way up to something. So, like, those help me switch off. So, I mean, in particular, like, farming sims, just working towards something, and then... It's like, it. it's a fine balance between grind and working towards something. That's why I like Diablo games as well. But also, I guess, roguelikes is like another genre that gels with me pretty well. Now we get to do this. I love the... The finisher move that the wolf does. Oh. <laughs> Dog backflip, yeah, that as well. I want 
be everything in wolf form. I don't have to, but I want to. I didn't know that. Guess I never tried. Oh. This is laziness more than wanting to beat it. I just pressing the button to transform back into a human just to fight one thing. Why can't the wolf use a bow or something? There we go. Do I even get anything for this or no, there's still more. The music hasn't stopped playing. Hey. I find interesting is we're getting another Zelda game, but I don't think we're getting another Mario game. But this hasn't really been any evidence of it. Wait, was that it for this area? I guess so. I guess the way we go back... I mean, do I want to go back? Or do I just warp out? Okay. Let me just see if there's anything. It's now in the interest of getting 100%. Well, at least from a heart perspective. Just want to make sure there's nothing I've missed here. Because I don't want to come back here. I'm just surprised there isn't another bug. Okay, one last look and then we'll teleport out. place in mind that I, I want to go first. Was it here? No, but that's Kakariko Gorge. Hang on, hang on. Yes, yeah. Someone in your class tried to argue how depression isn't real. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk about that here, but 
There are people like that, unfortunately, and it just comes from a place where people think that expressing emotion is not a good thing. Well, it's a monster, everybody run. It's okay. All right. Just don't focus on people like that, honestly. There will always be someone like that that won't have views that align with yours, so... The worst thing you can do is just engage with it. Just... Let him be. <laughs> Wasn't there a... I could have sworn there was a stone here, but maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, also don't let... It... The old saying is like, don't let, the... don't let it live rent-free in your mind. Just even mentioning it here. As it just means it's living rent free in your head. I wouldn't even mention that. It's just like, yeah, someone's being a dickhead. That's so. What's new? I'm kind of intrigued what the argument against depression would be. The argument is usually always because they weren't allowed to feel feel it. You know what I mean? Or they just it's something, it's one of those things where just because they haven't experienced something they don't believe it to exist. It's like one of those things, you know? But there's- it's just- you can't refute something that's documented and has science behind it. Like, at that point, you may as well start saying, Oh, you know, I- I- As an Australian, I've never seen snow, so I don't believe it exists. It's like, you'll call me a fucking idiot for that. And it's the same for anything that- you can say that you haven't experienced it or don't understand it, but you can't say it doesn't exist. When it quite clearly does. And it's one of those things that maybe they don't realize that they've had it themselves at some point, but it's just... We all share fundamental wants and needs and reactions, right? And some people experience those things to an extreme, and I think just... <sighs> you just need to... Just because you haven't felt something, be so dismissive of someone that might be feeling things a different way. But yeah, by the same token, just don't pay attention to people like that. I forget how you get that chest. It's either... I'm pretty sure I need to use a chicken to do it. I'm gonna go up. Sometimes it's just people that are product of a different era or have grown up and be their minds have been molded by someone who's a product of a different era. Like I'll give you I'll give you an ex a non-related example is like one thing I used to get quite a bit um, when I lived at home. So you know my parents come from um, a country in Central America. It's, uh, I don't know if you'd call it third world. It might be, but they grew up poor, they worked, been working since kids, it's all physical labor stuff, 
at the end of the day. And so I have a career that involves computers and when I first started doing that, sometimes I would come home and I'd be tired and I would get stuff like, what, what have you got to be so tired about? You just sat all day on a chair at a computer. Why do you need to be tired? Why are you tired? And it was just one of those things that like, I, I never really took that to heart. It was just a case of just, well, they, they don't get it and I don't think they will. And I mean, over the years, they, they kind of understood it more, but you know, to some degree, I think today they still believe that unless you're doing physical labor, you shouldn't feel exhausted ever. And I think that's kind of the same thing when it comes to mental health is like people that come from a closed off upbringing where you can't talk about your problems or express emotion. And so having something like depression is just seen as such a weakness. And why would anyone have that weakness? It's just bullshit. When, you know, everyone's human. Everyone's going to experience those things to some degree. It's just whether or not you choose to suppress it or not. Or are allowed to talk about it in a healthy way. I'm sure there are people out there that haven't experienced depression. I'm not saying that everyone does, but... I'm sure someone... Even someone who hasn't had it can surely appreciate that, yeah, it's a real thing. If they've ever been sad about something or just been, like, felt like they're drained but they don't know why, they'll know the fundamentals of it. Guess that's true, never talked about mental health growing up. Oh no, neither did I. Like, um, look, I, I have relatives that have, that I have, um, disagreements with when it comes to I guess ways of thinking and just life in general so I do have relatives that would kind of be in the same realm and not believing in something like depression but you know I, I can definitely debate it with them and just but respectfully you know I don't I don't get angry about it it's, it's just why Just be glad that, yeah, we are kind of getting to a point where that's that thing is being normalized a bit more. So that's what I mean. Like, we, we've definitely come a long way. And I think it's got to do... I personally think it's got to do with the world just not being a large place anymore. Um, the world's a much smaller place. And I mean it in the sense of because of the internet, it's just easier to... Communicate with people that you would never have otherwise communicated with. And that just means you have a higher likelihood of finding people that you gel with. Whereas in I mean me, like, I, I experienced... ...a childhood for a bit where, uh... Like, playing games was seen as being nerdy and being a loser. And, you know, that's still there to some extent, but we've reached the point where it's more normalized than, you know. It's... Look at it this way, I don't think my... None, I don't think any of my cousins have gotten shit for playing games. And I think that's the same when it comes to mental health stuff. It's just... You know, um, I, my family, and, you know, I love them, but growing up, there were, there were parts where, like, you know, uh, I was told, you know, as, as a guy, I'm not allowed to, it's not that I wasn't allowed to, it was kind of frowned upon if I, if I was to be too emotional on something, you know? And that's, it's bullshit, right? I, I don't think that should ever be a case. It's like, sometimes people need to feel what they want to feel.
But nowadays, you know, I, I see some of my cousins and friends, they have kids, and they don't say shit like that to them. <laughs> They're able to talk about stuff like that. And it's not to say, like, it solves everything, but at the very least, you know, having a conversation, I think, is better than just not having one at all. It's like, you might not resolve something and you might not get the result you want, but at least you tried. <laughs> Is this chicken taking a bath? Mental illness has a bigger place in society due to the internet, for better or worse. Yeah, I mean, look, like... I'm not gonna say it's all rosy and I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on the matter, because... Let me be crystal clear, I'm far from that. But... I think it's just... That's one of those things. There's good things and there's bad things about it. I think the good outweighs the bad. The biggest bully growing up was your brother. Well, I hope that you reach a place where it normalizes. Um, sibling rivalry is something that does happen, but... Um, it, de it depends how, how they are, you know, but people do grow out of that shit and as long as, uh, as adults, you can kind of, you know, let bygones be bygones and just put the past behind, then yeah, I mean, there's no need to hold on to that much resentment unless it's truly, truly fucked up. It's just... I, I know family that haven't talked to each other for like for various reasons some of them warranted others it's just petty petty beef and then it's just one of those things that it ultimately ends in that there's regret at the end of that path that maybe you should have not gone that long without talking not always like sometimes yeah <laughs> Chat. Family is what you make it. And sometimes you shouldn't feel forced to engage with family just because they're family. At the end of the day, the concept of family for me is people that care about you and would do enough for you, right? And look out for your well being. They might not be perfect, they might be flawed to some degree, but as long as, you know, the sum of that all is in the general direction of that. That's what family is. So, I don't know. I, I just didn't want- I didn't want to say, hey, forgive your sibling. When it's not as simple like that sometimes. Like, sometimes you have family that are fucked up and... Don't feel alone in that regard because there are a lot of people that are like that. So don't feel like you owe them anything, especially if they're that bad. But that being said, if it's something minor, then just, yeah, don't, don't live the rest of your life wondering or waiting until it's too late. So wholesome. I'm sorry. I don't know. Just, it's just one of these moods that I sometimes just feel very retrospective and just looking inwards, you know? Generally speaking, I think we are going into a better direction when it comes to mental health. We should be able to talk about our emotions in a way where we're in control of them and grow from understanding ourselves rather than repressing emotion, which may look like control, but 9 out of 10 is furthest from the truth. Yeah. I think... Yeah, it... I, I don't really want to... That's the thing, like, I'm, I'm not an expert on mental health, and... The only way I can talk about it is from the pers my perspective of things that I've personally felt. Like, during my life, that there have been times where I, I have felt like I've been stuck. And it, I don't think it's gotten to the form of full depression, but I, I definitely can relate to someone that, you know, say that they don't feel like doing something, or they don't have the energy to do something, right? 
Like, I wouldn't look at someone funny if they were to say that, because I know what those feelings are. Like, I may not have experienced them to the extent of some, but I, I can relate. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, just my upbringing, right? It's like... Uh, no one really talks about that stuff in my family. It's not to say they don't care, it's just, I guess, it's the product of, like, the environment of our parents, you know? It's just, they... <laughs> they came from a third world country where it's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about your feelings for? We need to, we need to make sure that uh, we have enough food on the table to survive. It's not to say that those feelings are invalid, it's just they're shoved aside and, you know, it, that's, I guess, what forms their, their worldview is just, no, no, we should be putting that aside. And I don't know. I don't think that's right, personally. Doesn't it- I have to go in the building. I'm waiting for this chicken, but it's not coming up. Let me try again. We are shaped by our environment, so you can't really blame them. Exactly. I think that that's the thing to remember sometimes is like... You'll definitely come across people in life that you aren't going to agree with. And they're going to have an opinion that might not be representative of the way things are now. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, you should, ex you should try to change their mind. But the only way you can do that is to just hear them out. Let them talk. And then you kind of express what you express. And it'll go one of two ways. They'll either show just how far gone they are and you won't be able to change their mind and then you just kind of move on or maybe you do i don't know but i i, I wouldn't get frustrated at someone who's just being an asshole it's like you're giving them too much power by being frustrated i think there's power in being stoic <laughs> just kind of you know, listening to what they say and then being like, oh, okay, yeah, I don't really agree. And then if they try to debate with you, it's like, all right, cool, and just walk away. Because you're not going to change their mind, and all of what's going to happen is, like, if they see you're frustrated, then they kind of feel like they've won. Like, frustration is something that certain people see it as a sign of winning an argument, when really it's just a sign of, no, dude, you're not getting it. Do I need to get higher? I swear it's from this point. Maybe the fact we can discuss mental health at all is a privilege of circumstances and places like that there are bigger issues that affect everything. Yeah, I suppose that is a form of privilege. But I think even still, um, I think we should get to a point where even where there's, like, larger things at hand. At the end of the day, like... We should be able to get to a point where... If someone's struggling like that, you should be able to talk about it. It's like, it's a conversation. Like, I, fa I failed... I just can't see how... You can't listen to someone for five minutes, you know? And sometimes even listening to someone for five minutes is enough to get well maybe not get rid of but like kind of put someone at ease you know what i mean just being heard is a big deal or feeling like you can be heard is a big deal and sometimes that's enough there's not honestly there's nothing worse than than feeling alone despite how many people are in the room with you and yeah that's what it can feel like when you can't talk to someone about something
I don't know. I think we'll get there one day. I definitely think there's also the problem of... Uh, there's oversharing as well, chat. I don't... Like, this, this one's a bit more contentious, but... Particularly in the context of streaming. Like... I... I know people that have genuinely struggled with things and have had, you know, problems. And I guess I say this from this place is like those people, for them to open up and talk about what's going on, it's been, ve it's something that comes from a place of difficulty. So like going to a stream and your first interaction being that. I get that sometimes it's, you know, maybe it's it's just, that's just what it is, right? But I've had cases where, yeah, like, my first interaction with a person is they'll just drop something extremely heavy and I won't be able to relate or talk about it, really, because it's like, I don't know the person and... I mean, I guess at the end of the day, they are looking for someone to listen, but sometimes it's just not that, and I don't know. Oversharing to someone who's not a therapist. Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oversharing to someone who's not a therapist. Or treating friends who... Yeah, exactly. Treating your friends like they're therapy. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. I think it's I think it's fine and innocent if it's done, you know, once where like you're really that overwhelmed and you just need to be heard. Like I can understand that. <laughs> By the way, someone, please, am I doing this chicken thing correctly? I don't want to drive people crazy. <laughs> this is it, right? Like I take that chicken, I jump off that edge. And then, hey, the chest is mine, right? I'm, I'm not, I'm not imagining this. I think I'm on the right path of the chicken. Okay, just making sure, because this is, this is what I remember. But this was 2006, you know. <laughs> the last time I did this was in 2006. I should aim more to the right of the cliff. All right, gotcha. Will do. Usually try not to be too open like this on Twitch unless it comes up naturally. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I really hope that no one felt called out by that, but just... I believe we should be able to have a dialogue about mental health in the context of, like, with family, friends, and people you trust, right? But at the same time, just appreciate that you know, streamers aren't therapists. We're, we're flawed humans, chat. And sometimes opening up like that to a streamer for the first time might be a bad idea because that streamer might not react in a good way. And then you might see it as just like validation that you're weird or that um, maybe you're, yeah, just it, it'll make you feel worse. That's why I don't recommend it. But if you've gotten to know the streamer, and you feel like you can trust that streamer, then, and, you know, there's a mutual sense of, oh yeah, I know this viewer, and of course I would try to listen to them and help them, then go for it. But as a first interaction, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. Can I get to that ledge over there? Or should I just jump from here? It almost seems like I can go from that ledge there, but then again, I could hit a wall here. All right, I'm just gonna go. Okay, aim more to the right of the cliff. So, just. Oh, good, good.
your first interaction is usually high. <laughs> Not everyone does that. It was only money. It wasn't even. It wasn't even a heart piece. Ah, I thought this was a heart piece. <laughs> I thought this was a heart piece. I would have left it otherwise. Ah. I mean, yeah. Thank you for the help. <laughs> it, it did work. I spent so much time just <laughs> going for that, and it wasn't even. Uh, hold on. There, there was a stone up here for a wolf, so I'm gonna just quickly do it. I did not get it. Ugh, <sighs> okay. I would like to point out as well, just in case, my family has gotten better when it comes to talking about mental health stuff. It's, I think, a bit more on the radar than it used to be. Which, you know, it shows people can change, despite having grown up in circumstances where that sort of stuff just was seldom talked about, so. Not all of them, but some. Generally don't think Twitch is the right place to talk to people about mental health. I mean, sure, if you know the streamer more, but generally don't think Twitch is the platform you talk to them for the majority of cases. At least for something that goes deeper than surface level. Yeah, I don't know. It depends, because there are some communities out there that I guess are well equipped to deal with that. But I would, in general, yeah, I mean, would, most of us don't really know. Like, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm on that bird of not being equipped to be able to talk about that stuff. I'm equipped to listen if we know each other. Wait, what? I missed the first note, didn't I? Yep, there we go. Like, I can... I can empathize, at the very least, and try to understand, but I just might not... I wouldn't feel comfortable... ...doing that with someone I don't know. Just because I, I don't know their circumstances, and I don't know what... I, I might say something wrong, and that's, like, the worst thing. Sorry for springing a deep, profound conversation at 2am. Don't apologize. I mean, what, what, what should we talk about instead? Zelda is pretty cool. <laughs> it is cool. Take sword in hand and find me. Yeah, I mean, I've missed I've missed a few of these, so don't worry, it's not 2 a.m. here. Yeah, it's almost 2 a.m. for me. Which reminds me, how long is this vod? Ugh, okay, <laughs> it's like heading towards four hours. Which okay, there's there's one other thing I wanted to do before I I forget. Okay, uh, now... Wait, Meedna... Whoop. We'll go to the gorge. I believe it's the gorge. But there was a cave I opened up that had a ghost in it. It says I've been live for seven hours. Yeah! I, I kind of have to do what I do. Just, Australian time zones aren't fun. It's pretty much at this hour where people are around. So I'll usually start streaming after dinner and then go into the evening. Depending on how busy it is. Okay. 
Oh, this is not cool. Yeah, okay, I have to transform back. Alright, that's fine. Uh <laughs> The only thing the only thing I hope that like Amongst all these real talk conversations that I have expressed things in a manner that hopefully you you appreciate and understand, chat. <laughs> I did I did the pose. Oh yeah. I mean I know that it probably won't be like something that everyone universally accepts. There might be some people that don't like something I said, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I'm always afraid of butchering people's names. <laughs> so sometimes I'll just be like, oh yeah, thanks, you, yeah. Wait, oh, I went back the wrong way. I think I'll general, uh, be generally fine with the mindset of I'm not your therapist, can't really go wrong when having deeper conversations. Yeah. No. I, like, I, I will always acknowledge that mental health is important. And we should be able to get to a place where it's fine to talk about that stuff. But at the same time, like, I, I, I'll, I'll repeat. <laughs> You know, as a streamer, I'm trying to be altruistic and honest with certain things, so, like... I care about chat... So, from a default point of view, as in day one, you know, I care about people in this chat as a collective. I want everyone to be doing well and, you know, being okay, right? To get to the point where, like, I take an extreme personal interest to the, you know, to where I would feel comfortable enough to talk mental, someone's specific, you know, situation. It's something that I wouldn't do with everyone right off the bat. That's, that's, I guess, my point. Like, if someone asks me and, you know, like, let's say they've been watching me for two days and then they ask if we're friends, I'll be like, I'm not your friend. And I'm not saying that because I'm being mean. I'm not saying we can't be friends. What I'm saying is streamers, to begin with, aren't your friends. They will- they do- they can care about you, like, generally, but to get to that point where it's like... You know, I'm talking about deep shit, for me, anyway. There has to be more than just, you know, we just talk on stream. That's just me. And uh, I'm always transparent about that. You've technically been here for four years, but at some point accidentally unfollowed because you st thought I... St Wait, and thought I stopped streaming. Right. No, that ha you're not the first that's happened to. At some point, I can't remember what year, but I've had multiple people suddenly come back and be like, What? Apparently I unfollowed you. So you're not the first to say that. I mean, honestly, all, all you've missed out on is just gear upgrades, mainly. It is definitely possible to make connections with people through Twitch. Met one of your very good friends years ago through the site. That person became a very good role model that you're glad to have met. Only not every John that site will be like that. Exactly. And just to be clear, like, I'll say it again. There are people from... That have, you know, that have viewed my content. 
that I've gotten to know, and I consider them my friends, and a couple of which very close friends that, you know, I, I can't imagine how my life would be without them. So, but you know, that's not the default. <laughs> I guess to get to that point, you know, we got to know, we hung out, we talked beyond the context of the stream. So, again, it's like, can definitely get to that point, but I'm not gonna be like that with everyone. What? Dude, I'm digging- I'm digging on the spot. Ah, oh wait. <laughs> Ugh. Chat, have you ever- do you have magpies where you live? This is- in Australia, this is what it's like in- in spring. You'll walk past the tree and then suddenly you'll hear- ah! And then some bird will start pecking you on the head for being near their tree. To the point where, like, there are warning signs near the trees that'll say, Magpie Swooping. Can't relate? Okay. <laughs> uh, I keep pressing up, but it's... that's what we want. Uh, I think this one requires the double shot, potentially. Like, if I get across there, I'm gonna drop. I need a double shot. There's no... I can't climb on that, so that's a double shot. The worst part of spring is the phobia of bees. Are bees aggressive? Depends where you are. Yeah, if you have an allergy, then you have every right to be afraid of them. I can gale jump there if I know how to. Nope. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not. I'm not gonna take any speed running shortcuts. The last time I played this was in 2006. This, I'm playing this again because I'm going through all the Zelda games before uh, Tears comes out. So. I mean, I'm sure if, if I saw it I'd, and practice it, I could probably do it. Enjoying Twilight Princess? Yeah. Love this game. I mean, it's good, it's good to revisit it after all this time. <laughs> Greetings, Mr. Lunk. I have come to deliver a letter. It is from Telma. <laughs> it's secretly the best one. I mean, I like this one. I really do. For me, it's it's up there in terms of the 3D ones. Well, my business concluded. Onward to mail. I think for storytelling, it's it's probably the best one for me. I just liked the premise of this one quite a bit. So I just realized it took me out of Zora armor. But it had to be done. Very biased towards it since it was your first. <laughs> Makes sense. Funnily enough, I'm not biased towards the first Zelda game I played. I guess because it was the original. Okay, we are going to... 
Hold up. Wait, there's no warp point, is there? That's Kakariko. Death Mountain, that's the one we want. I'm going to do something very annoying, but I have to, so bear with. We gotta go back into the dungeon and uh, get the chest that you need a hookshot for. Shouldn't take long. Original is alright, but it hasn't aged very well. No, not really. Oh, right, in general, I should just be here. Um, let me do this and then. Nintendo is sitting on a remake. What? Because they used, uh. They used. What do you call it? An engine to prototype Breath of the Wild that sort of simulated the NES graphics. They are sitting on the potential to make a remake. I don't think they've remade Zelda 1. Like, there's very high potential to remake it. The Oracle games are crying right now. Yeah, I kind of wish they would remake those and just use the Link's Awakening engine. Which is pretty much what happened back in the day. They made a tech demo, realistically. Can't imagine it would take two of them too long to make a fully publishable game. Yeah, I think the other thing they try to do, though, is they try to enhance it a bit. I'm not sure they can do much with that. But you're right, like, other p fans have done it. Oh, you know what? They did technically remake it. Now that I think about it, they did. It's just we didn't get to see it, and it was done in a very limited manner. But they ma they remade it for the Super Nintendo, briefly. Not completely, but technically there is a remake for Zelda 1. Um, they had this Satella satellite broadcast system where you would download games through satellite TV, and one of those was um, a remake of Zelda 1. There were, there were a lot of differences that made it more short, but that game had a remake. Yes, yeah, to tell of you. That's one of those things where, dude, Nintendo should... Uh, they have so much history, and I'm sure they have so many prototypes of games or things that they never released. Like... Super Nintendo World as a theme park does, doesn't interest me. But if they had a museum where they had all this shit, like concept art or games that just never made it, or being able to play like early prototypes of games, I'd want to go there. <laughs> like it's such a no-brainer. And it would be so interesting as well. They charge $70 for Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but that's not a Nintendo thing. That's an industry thing. Across the industry, games are increasing their prices. Dis like, Nintendo is more like Disney, or at least Disney before subscription services, where certain movies would only get re-released like once every 10 years. It was called the Disney Vault, basically. You know, they would release a movie, an old movie, and then it would go on sale for a while and then they would stop making it and would you would not be able to buy it again for like 10 to 15 years and then they would re-release it again so you know there was a high demand for it nintendo's kind of the same there's a bunch of things they could do but they won't like, okay, let's talk about Game Boy on the Nintendo Switch. They could have done that a long time ago. There were references to that existing a long time ago. They could release more games. 
instead of trickling them out, but they're not going to. You have no interest in playing Tears of the Kingdom on Switch. It's very sad that they aren't releasing it for the Wii U. Well, I mean, at a certain point, you can't support a console anymore. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, the Wii U didn't sell, first of all, to begin with. So it's already, that's already like a very big hill to get over. But it's kind of like, at a certain point, yeah, they just have to let go and move on. No matter how easy it is, it just doesn't make sense because there's a lot that goes into it. It's like you got to manufacture for it. And it's just one of those things where it's capitalism at the end of the day. It's capitalism at the end of the day. It's like... Game publishers could, or at least Nintendo, could really still make games for the Super Nintendo if they really wanted to. But they're not going to because they want to sell you a new console. And then they want you to keep buying stuff for that new console. If you could just use your old console, then what's the point? I think the biggest flaw of the Wii U, I'll say it again, and this comes from someone that was working in retail at the time the Wii U released. Um, it's the name. 100% the name and the look of it. That was the biggest problem. Parents that didn't know any better, they thought the Wii U was the, uh, the touchpad. And so they thought they were buying a touchpad for the Wii. And they were like, nah. Why would I buy a touchscreen? That's so expensive. We don't need a touchscreen for our Wii. And because the console looks so similar to the Wii, that's what they thought it was. They didn't know that it was a new console. They thought that they were just doing a touchpad for the Wii. And, you know, the U is for the touchpad. That's, that was the, what was perceived. So, their biggest mistake was calling it the Wii U. They should have given it a new look, and they should have called it something else. And it would have been fine. There was nothing wrong with the console. There was nothing wrong with the games. It was purely that it was Paul it was just poorly named. Sometimes it's something very minor that makes something fail. And I think that that is what I think is the case. Just from my experiences of just you know when um I would show so some parents would come up wanting to buy a console for their kids. So the conversation would go with, you know, what's Nintendo got? And I'd show them the Wii U, and then they'd be like, oh, but we already have a Wii. That's how the conversation went there. I think only once did it go down with someone knowing what the Wii U was. Every other time it was like, but we already have a Wii. I don't want a touchscreen. And then the explanation, no, no, it's, it's, it's actually a whole console. It's a new console. Wii U has a great library as well. Lots of Switch games were just Wii U ports. Yeah, exactly. It's a testament to the the games on the Wii U. They were where is that? Where is that coming from? There. Man, this is this chest better be worth it. This is just okay. That should be it. I'm not convinced Breath of the Wild, sorry, Tears of the Kingdom will run better than Breath of the Wild. Oh, I wasted, I am the error, I wasted my time. I can't warp out of here. Okay. But, you know what, I was gonna, I did it because then, I'm sure inevitably I'm gonna be looking for heart pieces. I just want to know that the dungeons have had all their chests open, 
and I don't have to think about the dungeons. It's just overworld hunting at the end of it. I don't... I don't want to repeat. I don't want to repeat of Minish Cap. I don't want to repeat of Wind Waker. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'm not allowing it to happen. Oh, wait. I can't even get out that way, can I? I have to keep going. <laughs> but for those that don't know... Okay. In Minish Cap and Wind Waker, the final heart piece in those games took me about three hours to find. Or to acquire. Let's use the word acquire. In Wind Waker, there was one heart piece that I couldn't find, and the end result was I misread an, an instruction and thought I had gotten it when I hadn't. So that was like a three hour wild goose chase, trying to find out where I had missed the heart piece, visiting all the areas again, where it said there was a heart piece. So then I was like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake again. So with Minish Cap, I was thorough, and I got all the heart pieces. But then the very last one, unbeknownst to me, there was there's a mini game. There's a mini game in it where it's it's a gacha machine, and you had to collect 130 figurines from this gacha machine. Doesn't sound problematic, except when you take into account how many shells you need and the odds that, of getting them. It's it's a pain in the ass, and it, so I knew where that heart piece was, but it was three hours of playing that stupid gacha game to get that, that heart piece. It happened again. So now with this one, I am not letting it happen again. I am being thorough as we play. I'm making sure that the dungeons are cleared. Every single chest is acquired from the dungeons. And then at the end, if I am missing something, it's because of the overworld. It's got nothing to do with dungeons. It's just, okay, let's just go through the overworld and let's find it. That's my plan. I'm sure I'm going to be looking for heart pieces for like a couple of hours, but I'm, I refuse. I will, I refuse to let it get to a point where I'm hunting for one heart piece for three hours. It's just not going to happen again. That's, that's my promise. Or at least what I'm going to try and do. I don't think there's anything else to do here. I think we're good for now. The only game you've got in every heart piece in is Link's Awakening because you thought it was too short on its own. Makes sense. Uh, okay. One sec. I just want to do one more thing. But I do have to wrap things up for tonight, chat. It is late, and this VOD has been going for a while. Uh, hang on. Where is Hylia? There's Lake. There's Castletown. That's always the main thing. You so whilst I'm doing this final thing, uh, let me start by saying thank you for watching tonight. Hope you did enjoy the stream, or have been enjoying the playthrough so far. Especially if you're new around here. Appreciate you uh, checking out the content. So, I will return tomorrow and we will continue this. I'll try and do some Metroid tomorrow. I kind of doubled down on Zelda today because I, I want to get more of it done. But I'll try and play some Metroid tomorrow as well. But in the meantime, uh, if you do want to watch more of my content or streams, you can head on over to YouTube. Just look for the channel name over there. I have three channels. They have their different purposes, but, you know, VODs, highlights, and uh, the occasional stream on YouTube, because I'm trying that out. Um, so I do hope you check that out. Just, yeah, search for the channel name over there. Or if you want links, just go to shambles.gg, which is my website, and it has everything you could ever possibly ask for. 
over there. So I hope you do check that out. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, as always, thank you so much for clicking and sticking around till the end. <laughs> and if you want to help out the channel, just do the old uh, algorithm appeasal thing. I'm talking about the thumbs up, but yeah, also I like hearing back from people, so... Don't have to, but always appreciated when people do do that. Okay, I've, I've done my spiel. Um, wasn't there a chest down here? I remember there being a chest, but I'm also looking for... I swear... I swear there's... There's a stone here somewhere. Not, not in the underwater, but like... I swear I've passed one. Not on Twitch much anymore, but we'll keep an eye out. Yeah, no worries. I mean, even then, if you can't catch Twitch streams, like... I try to stay on top of the uploads. Of, uh, past streams. I do record them locally, so the quality on YouTube's probably gonna be better. Is this a thing? But yeah, the reason I'm trying YouTube streaming in particular is just because the ads on Twitch are kind of getting annoying. I will say that as well, by the way. If you put up with ads tonight, thank you so much for being patient. I don't schedule them. I, in fact, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have them. Um, but I say this because the past few Tuesdays, I, I, I use that as a time to relax and I'll try to tune into streams from friends where possible but you know last last time i did that could not have a conversation with the person because it was just constant ads it wouldn't it would not stop like i got shown an ad for that dungeons and dragons movie at least seven times in half an hour and if that's the state of things when it comes to finding new streamers to watch, or just watching a stream, man... Just, yeah, you're the real MVP if you put up with that shit and still want to watch me. So, thank you so much for that patience. But, you know, I will say that if the YouTube streaming thing does take off, I will leave Twitch in a heartbeat. Because, yeah... I think, I think the ads defeat the purpose of being live. The point of being live is you're experiencing something as it happens. You're in the moment. It doesn't make sense to have something to take you away from that. It doesn't matter how smart they're going to make their system to, like, try and figure out when there's a lull. At the end of the day, you are missing out on something that is happening, which defeats the purpose of live. It makes sense for something that's pre-recorded because it's not live. But I guess that's all they can do right now, so... There's a D&D &D movie? There is, yeah. I'm not gonna talk about it. Because <laughs> I've seen that stupid ad so many times. I'm not gonna see that movie out of spite, like... It's gonna be ten years later... And some someone will be like, oh... Hey, remember this movie? You want to watch it? I'll be like, no. Why? Uh, because. Saw too many ads for it. Nope. Out of spite. I will never watch that movie. And the thing is, with ads, streamers... I mean, okay. They have been offering more money... But in the grand scheme of things, streamers don't make that much money off ads. Like, they have more to benefit from ads than we do, let's put it that way. And it annoys more viewers than it does... ...you know. They could have banner ads, but those make less money. Yeah, no. They already have banner ads for the record, they, they do appear. But they need both. But yeah, I mean, on YouTube, uh, for live content only, you get the option of not having ads. So, but I understand that YouTube streaming, it's clunky. So, I'm trying it. Um, on the weekends, I do. 
I do stream over there. Try to do stuff, but... You know, it's worth a try. But at the end of the day, I, I just want... I want this to be enjoyable, you know? I, I always strive to make my streams as good as possible from an audio perspective, from just visuals, making sure that everything looks nice. So, that's why. It's like, in the interest of that, I am, yeah, considering YouTube more and more, because I know how much of a pain ads are. Sadly, YouTube streaming is never going to be as big as Twitch. Uh, I don't know. The thing is, Twitch is doing a bunch of stuff that is kind of annoying streamers, and... I think all it takes is one colossal screw up, and then... Okay, I can't do this. Or can I? Can I move? No, I can't move. I was gonna say if I can do that, but I can't. It's not this one. Okay. Like, it, it's growing, and I think a lot of it just comes from people being tired of ads, uh, smaller streamers just not being able to grow as quickly. Um, and just Twitch doing things like, hey, we're not going to change our 50-50 split. You cost us money, sorry. Kick has better chances than YouTube. Uh, I don't believe that. It's purely because... It, the bigger chance to fail. It's one of those things where... A new platform has a very finite timeline before they run out of money. Because video delivery is expensive. Like, in a major way. So I, I firmly think that... YouTube is probably the only one that could take Twitch on because they can afford to take their time because they're getting revenue from other things. Whereas in new services that they're only ex like the only reason they exist is to provide the same thing Twitch does. That's a much harder battle because it means they need to make money sooner. I mean, it might be more interesting, sure, but like, I think the likelihood is lower. At least that's what I think. Anyway, um, I'm teleporting here because I'm pretty sure this is where I need to go next. YouTube has no incentive to go big on streaming. Yes, they do. Because the incentive to go big on streaming, not as big as Twitch, is, is simply this, is like, live streaming is a major slice of entertainment right now. It's like one of the larger forms of it. And if they can get to a point where... Okay. Content creators are lazy. Let's just, let's just say that. We want things to be smooth and seamless. And if YouTube can provide a way... For us to be able to take our live stream and generate YouTube content from it that can keep making money perpetually, then it'll win in the end. No matter how long it takes, it'll just win in the end. Because a Twitch stream, after 30 days, or whatever amount it is, it's just gone. That's it. Look at it this way. It, look at any streamer. Look at any streamer. It doesn't matter which one of any size, of any whatever, particularly the ones making money, they don't just have a Twitch account. If Twitch was truly the thing that was the most viable, there wouldn't be any need to make any other account because you'd be making all your money on Twitch. But that's not the case. The case is you make money live, but then after the fact, it's like you gotta do, you have to do YouTube. You have to do other stuff. And if YouTube can get into a, into, into a certain point where you're doing your live streams there and then it's that easy to carry over your content, which you're going to have to do anyway, by the way, to be viable doing this as a job, then they're going to win. 
that's my feeling on it. No one is going to watch YouTube. No one is going to go to YouTube to watch live streams, though. D yeah, but that's the state of things now. But there's already been there's already been a shift. There's already been a shift. Like, I'm just saying, in terms of who to bet on to maybe take down take out Twitch, I would bet on YouTube. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that YouTube will ultimately be successful. Though I have a feeling they will be. But I think if I was to pick between YouTube and someone, some new company that only is doing what Twitch is doing, I would pick YouTube. That's all. Whatever, like, we can't predict what's going to happen, but, like, I'm going off a hunch here of what makes sense. Like, the mere, the mere fact that streamers have to be on YouTube anyway... That already indicates to me that, like, if YouTube were to step their game up in streaming... And the thing is, small streamers are already having problems being discovered on Twitch. It's two things. If they make their tools good enough, and if they make... They solve the problem of discoverability. So, in other words, like, you know, smaller content creators have a chance again. They're going to win. There it is. But you know, those are big ifs. We'll see if they do it. But that's that's my hunch anyway. And especially with the split, right? Like <sighs> I don't want to talk about it because it's it's going into real life, but you know, it's kind of getting harder to live. Costs of living are going up, inflation, all that shit. And for Twitch to be taking half of a streamer's money, particularly ones that want to dedicate their life, or at least their career, to streaming, and YouTube is saying, we're not going to take half. I'm just saying, it's, a ma it's only a matter of time. Like, yeah, right now, I agree, not many people are watching YouTube streams. I know this firsthand. And the experience, definitely, definitely clunky. But that's not to say it's going to be like that forever. In fact, like, if you look at how it was at the start of the year, where all the videos used to be just on one tab, your shorts and everything, that experience is much better now. Now at least they have a dedicated area for shorts. Shorts has its own UI. Uh, live streaming has theater mode. There's a bunch of stuff that they've done. They need to do more. But it's getting there. Whereas in Twitch, all they've done is just double down on the fact that they're not changing the 50-50 split. And just showing us more ads. Not sure how much of income is purely based on ad revenue for streamers. I can guarantee you that there's no streamer that would be relying on ad income because it's basically nothing. It's basically nothing. Do you want me to be completely transparent? I'll tell you how much I've earned off ads. In the last 30, in the last 30 days, I've, I've earned $2 off ads. I've earned two dollars off ads in the last thirty days. The period before that, a dollar seventy-nine. Now, I'm not a big streamer by any means, but like, if you're talking about making income, more money would come from people doing bits, subscriptions, and all that stuff, and looking for sponsors on their own. I've heard that sentiment from other streamers as well, like larger ones. Okay, uh, cool. We are in the lake, so this is where I want to be. I'll turn back into a human. But I'm pretty sure the next area, repair the cannon, and then we head there, right? I can do that now. Mm. 
<laughs> like, the biggest stream is they're looking for their own sponsors. Let's put it that way. They're not relying on Twitch and their ads. Oh yeah, there's this bird as well, but we'll leave that for now. Okay. Special repairs. Cannon okay, well, where is it? Oh. Maybe I need to go find it. Alright. Also, I think if you're big enough for sponsors, you probably won't have an issue with a 50-50 split. At least not at that point. That'll be hard for you to make a living. No, I mean... But... I guess that's that's the thing. I guess that's the thing. It's one of those things that's hard to, to talk about. Because I can't relate to it. But I, I'll speak from it from a, like, a... Just... Trying to make it a career point of view, anything that takes half is kind of fucked. No matter at, no matter what point you look at it. This is without taking into account tax. Tax is a completely different thing, just to be clear. Tax, you're contributing to society. That's different. This is half of it is going to like one of the richest corporations in the world. That's that's the thing where there's an issue, I think. Like, yeah, you could probably afford to take that hit. You're right, when you get large enough, but... Should you take that hit? I don't know. A lot of a lot of streamers did negotiate a 70-30 split, and rightfully so. Alright, uh, anyway. But yeah, I think... Don't rule, don't rule out, um, YouTube. It's not ideal now, but if anyone's gonna take on Twitch, I think, I think it'll be them. That's all. I definitely agree that right now they're not ideal. Um, whoops. But, you know, if I had a choice of platform right now, I would probably want to stream to YouTube, and that's purely right now because of the ad thing. It gets brought up so often that it's ruining someone's viewing experience, and at the end of the day, I just want people to have a good viewing experience, right? So, that's, that's all I'm about. <laughs> anyway, this is it. Um, I'm not going to do my long-winded outro again. I'm just going to say, once again, thank you so much for tuning in for the chat and everything. Do appreciate it. I'll be live again tomorrow, and we'll continue Twilight Princess, and we'll do some Metroid Prime as well. So those are definitely two games you can expect to see tomorrow. But yeah, in the meantime, uh, go check out the website that doesn't fail YouTube, and I'm on there too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Thanks again, everyone. Take care.